But once I click start streaming, if I have, yep, see, here it is. I truly do not understand <laughs> what that's about. Although, come on. There we go. There we are. This is saying, making me nervous. Okay. Copy that link. Chat. Are we. Okay. Looks like it's fine. It looked really stuttery there for a minute. I was. And I'll go ahead afraid. and tweet it out too. Okay. Uh, where am I going? Discord. To tell other people. Okay. I went down a weird rabbit hole today that I'm excited to talk about here on the show. Cool. Um, it's it. Well, I started going down a weird rabbit hole. I have not reached the end of it yet, but I. Have well, that's the thing about rabbit holes. Usually, they don't end. <laughs> I'm pretty excited to see where this one goes. Um. Cool. Um. Let me make sure everything sounds okay. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. Okay, that sounds okay. Um, okay. Stream looks good over here. Looks good on the internet. I'm going to start recording locally. Are you ready to do the same? I am. Now recording locally. Okay. As Let me am I. Get handy for a clap. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Right on. Uh, I'm also going to pop out the chat, and then we'll just go ahead and say we're good to go. Um, I'll be curious to see who shows up, since this is kind of a... I mean, we just... It, it's only been, what, a week off? And now suddenly... Then we're back. <laughs> yeah, now suddenly we're back. Um, hey, for, you know. For now. Um, okay, pop out chat. I guess I actually don't need to pop it out. I'm just going to have that open. Okay, you ready? Ready to go. All right, here we go. Listen up, library patrons, and welcome back to A Bro with Skywalkers. I am one of your librarians, Ben. I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Cole. Library, fellow no, no. librarian. Sorry, wrong podcast. I threw myself <laughs> off because I accidentally unplugged my headphones. Um and was thinking, about, was thinking about that and just kind of defaulted to the first podcast intro I ever did rather than the one that I have to think a little bit harder about <laughs> every time I do it. <laughs> um, it happens. Yeah, but uh, we're back. Um, I don't remember what we said, like, whenever we finished up Darth Bane. Um, I think we said we probably wouldn't start a new book before the end of the year. I think you're right. Which I is still true. It is still true. We are not starting a new book before the end of the year. <laughs> But we were recording Skyhopper yesterday, and we were kind of like, well, why not just do an interlude for fun? Um, Might as well. Yeah, there's really no reason not to. And I, like I told you, Cole, just a second ago, <sighs> noticed something earlier that is probably not that interesting to anybody else. Um, I tried to explain it to Allison earlier, and she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know why this is even kind of relevant to my life and the truth is it's not it's, it's not so, but it's something you found that, it fascinating it's something that i noticed that it's something that i really want to know more about um that said before we get into that i did just talk to you yesterday mm -hmm. i'm imagining that very little has happened in your life in the way of star wars between yesterday and today has anything, anything fair. come up uh, since we finished up darth Vader? um I've read a few more chapters of Rise, uh, the Rising Storm. Okay, okay. So I'm now like three quarters the way through oh, it, so okay. I've, re I've read a good bit actually. You, I was gonna say you did. You were just halfway through. I think it was a little bit further than I thought I was. Okay. I think it was like more like, I don't know, five, three fifths or something. Okay. Now I'm up to three quarters. So. Okay. But, well, uh, yeah. You, you mentioned yesterday that the book, I've, you know, I think it's no secret at this point that yeah. that book is, I tend to think of it as kind of a one long action sequence and that's not necessarily a a knock i liked that book a lot uh, but you said the book picked up for you once the action kicked in does that yeah i'd, I'd say generally that's that's fair and i, I don't think that, like the action really started until around the halfway point right maybe slightly before but ish yeah i kind of i do kind of lump all the stuff on valo i kind of lump that 
all together as part of the mm -hmm. action sequence, even though that, you know, that's, that's not true. Yeah. Cause it, and there is like the early reactions bit with the, uh, the attack on the innovator, right. when it's still in like dry dock or space dock or whatever you want to call it. Sure. Stuff going on. Um, well, but now I'm things ready. are fully in thrall. Okay. Yeah. Now they are. So what are you, what are you thinking? How are you feeling about it? Uh, I generally am really enjoying it, but cool. I don't know if I mentioned it on here, if it was just on Skyhoppers, that the early chapters I found a little bit frustrating because there's like several chapters like consecutively the end when fake like fake fake out deaths. And I was like, if this continues, I'm going to get pretty annoyed. But thankfully, that has <laughs> stopped. I still do find the chapter like breakdown kind of frustrating because i actually looked at one point i just i was like i was curious like, how many chapters are in this book it's like 76 or 78 chapters and it's still only like you know a 320 page book or something so it's like it's a little bit excessive to me yeah like nearly every time a point of view changes it changes chapters and i'm yeah. like i don't think you need to do that it's not and it doesn't really hurt the book much but it's something i find a little bit frustrating um, I'm not going to talk about the Cessna's Deception. I'm not going to talk yeah, that, about Yeah, that's the other one that always jumps out. You know, yeah. the Cessna's Deception, to me, it was always an anomaly. It's like, man, this guy's just really strange about how he does chapters. Because there's there's literally some chapters that have, like, this much text, like, on one page. <laughs> you I... know, like, like two paragraphs. I'm like, I don't understand why this was a chapter. <laughs> okay, you want to know something interesting? I am fairly certain. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm fairly certain that this is one of, if not, Kevin Scott's first novel. Mm. He is primarily a comics writer. That much is certain. Right. That much is for certain. Yeah, that um, is definitely certain. Yeah, I, I'm looking. Although I, I'm on his website now, and it's looking like I'm wrong. He actually has written quite a few books. It looks like, but a lot of them have been. Okay, no, I'm an idiot. He's written plenty of books. It's definitely his okay, first Star cool. Wars book, I think. But. Uh, yeah, I do know and that you know that may just be how he writes, and that's that's yeah. fine. I was gonna but... say I do know I maybe Charles Sewell, maybe Light of the Jedi is Charles Sewell's first novel. I, mean, I, like I swear, it. I feel to like God, that might be right. I was gonna say I swear to God I I know someone... again it's one of those ones I wouldn't swear to. It's like I know it's their first Star Wars book, but I do feel like Charles Sewell was mainly again mainly like a comic writer. Yeah, I feel like he I feel like maybe he had another like an original novel coming out. Maybe, like, around the same time as Light of the Jedi? Okay. But, you know, could be completely talking out of my butt here. I am looking yeah. at his releases, and they are... <laughs> looks like a lot of Star Wars, um, but also primarily comics. So, I think maybe mm -hmm. I just had the two flipped. Um, but, anyway. That's, uh... I'm glad to hear you're enjoying it, though. I think... Mm -hmm. I think that one is good. I think The Fallen Star is better. So I think well I know you like Claudia Gray right you've generally been oh, yeah. a fan of the stuff yeah so mm. I think no was... Into the Dark did take me forever to read so well it happens <laughs> it happens and I'm yeah, getting through this way faster than that so you yeah, know we'll so, see well and I think it, in something Shadows is the next one I've got into into the no, into the it can't dark. be into the shadow. Out it's of it's the, into out the dark. Of the out of the shadows. Okay, I can I can see it on my shelf, but it's partially obscured. I can just see the shadows. <laughs> right. Mine Ironically, is... yes. I'm looking at it, out of the shadows. That one, I <sighs> hate to be negative. Don't want to be too negative, but I will just you know I will be honest. I think the overall the young adult books kind of are on a bit of a slight downward trajectory as you mm. go through them. I think uh, into the dark is the best one. Uh, Out of the Shadows is pretty good. Um, and Midnight, or, you know... Why can I never remember what it was called? Midnight Horizon. That's what I thought it was, but I'm like, that doesn't seem right. Uh, Midnight Horizon. Which is a great title. It is. <laughs> Midnight Horizon, I think, is... You know, I've I think we talked about it on Skyhoppers. I've probably talked about it here. Feels like like a middle-grade novel. That's just an, a, that's a young adult novel length. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, just kind of outstays its welcome a little bit. But... Uh, Which is a shame. Yeah, but not, you know, not bad by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Just not my thing. And I don't think it's been mentioned. If I look kind of distracted, it's because I'm doing a chapter breakdown while we're talking. So if I'm not looking at looking up, that's the reason. <laughs> um, I think one thing we can also, is speaking of the way you look, we could talk, we can point out the fact that you now have a, you've got your weird jerry-rigged ring light situation. Ring light. 
so <laughs> so i don't look quite as a shadowy <laughs> we can actually palpatine yeah um <clears throat> but yeah uh, rising storm is good is good and it really i think the ending is really heavy i think the ending is really good overall the second half of that book is really strong um but the fallen star i think and is just better i think more consistent and then uh hmm. light of the jedi is just you know i've i've expounded about that novel enough i yeah. think I you liked it way more than i did i i did like it but you liked it a lot no and i i still i kind of think back on it i'm like well what is it about that book that sucks me in and i i think it's i'm a big fan of the way Avar Chris views the Force. I like that, and that's kind of her, you know, air quotes her book. She's not in it a ton, um, mm -hmm. but it's more her book than any of the others. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, Speaking of short chapters, I'm encountering some short chapters in this book. <laughs> oh, <laughs> toward the end. <laughs> um, let it be known, <laughs> listeners. I do not know what book Cole has chosen, and honestly, I thought we were just going to get. He's got a feeling, but we'll see if he's right later. Uh, yeah, I, I certainly have, I have my. Uh, I, Cole is, we'll say, less of a wild card than I am when it comes to choosing books, especially yeah. whenever... I nearly, like, I will say I nearly went really wild and picked something crazy, but I didn't do that. It scares so. me a little because I know yesterday the war, the ruins of Dantooine did come up on Skyhoppers, <laughs> so it does scare it me. It wasn't that. Okay. that okay. Honestly, I didn't even think about that one. That one is gonna... I don't know who's gonna end up picking that one, you know? I don't either, man. I feel like it'll be me, but also... So you've never read it, right? No, I haven't. And it's weird to, that there's a Star Wars book that I'm actively, like, not looking forward to reading. Just mm -hmm. because I'm afraid it's really... I've it, Kind of like the holiday special, I'm afraid it really is as bland as people say it is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've talked at length before about how the holiday special, the Star Wars holiday special, is not even that fun to watch. Uh, after the first, like, 15 or 20 minutes... It just gets right. bad and boring um, and stops being funny bad. But uh, I don't know. So yeah, every once in a while, I kind of get the, the urge. I'm like, well, should I pick it up? Should I just do it? Should I just get it out of the way? And I'm like, no. I would literally rather read freaking Heirs to the Force or whatever the first Young Jedi Knights book is called like for the 10th time. Then read, then then have to face this book, or God forbid, what if I like it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then what? Um, although I will say I don't know how likely that is. Uh, <laughs> I, I think know. it'll just. I I'm not counting it you out. You have you do have some nostalgia for galaxies, don't you? Not nostalgia necessarily, um, because I didn't play it originally. But I have a oh, yeah. I do have a I have a soft spot <laughs> for it for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Just. I know how important of a game it was, and, you know, it, it's like the Old Republic, I think, is a really, really good game, and I've, you know, talked about that here as well. Um, but Galaxies just had had freedom that a lot of modern games, MMO or otherwise, just don't afford players anymore. Um, but it's also sometimes impenetrable and boring, dare I say, and mm -hmm. the Old Republic... I could totally play that game offline and just play through the story missions and have a good time. Galaxies. Um, I know people still love it and like to play on the the uh, the emulator servers, the fan servers. Mm -hmm. I do not feel like that game is even a third of of what it was, or at least what I heard it was back in its heyday when actual when people really played it. You know. Um, yeah. I think not having players is really a that game is kind of kind of lives or dies by its player base. Um, whereas something more narrative driven like the Old Republic can get away with, you know, I, I very rarely do group content in the Old Republic. I'm usually playing it alone. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I don't know if I've mentioned here that I've been reading the uh, kind of accidentally been reading the. Uh, Han Solo's Revenge, book number two in the Han Solo Adventures. Um, yeah. Last night, I did I, go to... I think you may have started that since we recorded, maybe. Okay, I, I probably did. I 
But see, that's the thing, because like I told you yesterday, I didn't really go into it expecting to, like, read the book. <laughs> but the circumstances of me reading in bed have led me to read that book <laughs> more than Convergence, which is the book that I'm, air quotes, supposed to be reading right now. Because um, that was the book that I officially started and said, this is the Star Wars book I'm reading right now. Um, that one's good, too, by the way. That one's really starting to pick up. I did get to read it last night. Um, but Han Solo's Revenge is really good. I look forward to talking about that a little more once I get a little further into it. Um, mm -hmm. cause one thing that I've kind of noticed about those Han Solo adventures books is that they truly do feel like that. In some cases it almost feels like, yeah, there's an overarching plot, but there were so many, it's like they're collections of smaller vignettes. It kind of feels like, mm -hmm. at least that's kind of how at star's end and, uh, Han Solo's Revenge have felt thus far. Where it's like, yeah, there's something bigger going on, but honestly, I don't even necessarily know what Han Solo is getting revenge for. And I'm halfway into the book. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, there are yeah. a couple things it could be. I mean, it's it's still enjoyable. I love Brian Daly. Huge fan. That guy was a genius. But, you know. Um, well, Mogo's in our chat. Hi, Mogo. Uh, <laughs> as usual. Um... But yeah, I mean, that's what I've been up to. Um, since we've recorded, I think we had a Jedi Survivor trailer. No, we talked about that, didn't we? Did we? No. <laughs> no, I don't think it was out I yet. I can't remember anything. It was two weeks ago, and it, it hasn't it been was. two weeks since we recorded. You're Okay. Or it's been exactly two weeks since okay. we recorded. Well, one way or the other, we talked about yeah. it on Skyhoppers, and it's really not a very meaty trailer. It kind of gives you just the barest bits of information to chew on. Um, so not really a ton to break down. Uh, I yeah, not really a ton to break down. Like I said, to me, the most interesting, like cool tidbit thing was that there seems to be a, a Gendai or a Gendai, depending on how you say yeah. it, that Dirge's species seems to be one of the antagonists, which is pretty cool. Well, and I think because they're a pretty rare species. I do like what you said yesterday about how it's like, they're a really good video game bad guy. Cause you can beat them over and over again, but out never mm -hmm. actually kill them. Yeah, um, and I, I can just imagine that being, like, a fun thing for people that don't know anything about the species. Like, you know, pretty brutally destroy this guy, and then he comes back, like, what? Well, I can so imagine cheap, that being fun like, at no, us. It's, people it's, that know are like, yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and what I really want is them to do something really crazy with him, like what they do with Dirge in the Gindy series. Like, oh, when he gets, like, busts out of his armor and is, like, this huge, veiny, muscly thing. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be amazing to see brought to life with the realistic graphics. Yeah, and we did get a look at the guy in the tube. Um, mm -hmm. Don't know what to make of that yet. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, I don't mean to... I, I'm kind of being a little flippant. I don't mean to sound not excited. I am very excited for this game. It's just, I, I think our consensus yesterday was that there just wasn't a ton that we didn't expect to see in it. You know, it kind of, the game mm -hmm. kind of looks like more of the same in a good way. Um, and I think we're all most excited for the story, which was not yeah. touched on at all. I mean, <laughs> as long as the gameplay is like still the solid foundation that it is, that's going to be fine. Yeah. So we just need another good narrative to go with it. And if it's the same people working on it, I have no doubt that it'll yeah, why would it still not be solid. Good? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be good. Um, the, the, yes. the big concern is that there's no sign of Marin or Grease. A lot of the like, side characters we've grown attached to, they are not. They don't even show up at all in the trailer. So it's like, uh, I'm assuming they're still a part of this story. But... <laughs> well, and see, that's because I remember whenever... Um, is it Battle Scars? Is that what the book's called? Yeah. When that was announced, Sam Maggs is the author. And... Um, she said that she did confirm that she was writing Marin. Mm -hmm. Um which is like, okay, cool. But also that yeah. does not necessarily confirm that Marin is showing up in the game. <laughs> it does I, not. <laughs> I do think I do think it would be very weird. To have a character who had so much potential, you know, the last Night Sister, ostensibly or presumably, mm -hmm. um, to go away off screen, that doesn't mm -hmm. make a lot of sense to me. 
So I don't think it's yeah. going to happen. I have no doubt she'll be in the game. Yeah. Honestly. And unless somehow they kill her off in the book, which that would be just the most <laughs> tragic thing ever. Um, apparently, Fatmatic is here. Hello, Fatmatic. The, this game comes out a week before the Resident Evil 4 remake. Um, mm-hmm. I've never played Resident Evil 4. It's been on my list for a long time. Um, the franchise, I have no involvement I, I, or yeah, interest I in, really. Very little, very, very little uh, knowledge and experience with the Resident it, Evil It's one franchise. of those series that, like, you hear about a lot if you're into the gaming scene at all, but it's a very up-and-down franchise from what yeah. I know. <laughs> Yeah, it's like one and two, the quality like, goes all over the place, and like the tone and the... <laughs> one and two, one and two you hear about. I don't hear much about three. Resident Evil Four is a classic. Mm-hmm. Resident Evil Five and Six, I think, were kind of panned, and then you get up to like seven and eight, the new ones, and those are mm-hmm. those are really well, really pretty well liked. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. I don't know. It's on my Resident Evil One is on my PlayStation Classic, and Resident Evil Two is a game I want to get for my N sixty four at one point. So I will play them. One of the I didn't days. even realize it was on sixty four, but that makes sense. It see, I don't know. I it's one of those kind of tech wizardry games. Like, how did they get this on a cartridge? <laughs> right. and one of the one of those kind of things. <laughs> that makes um, sense. Talk to me when Resident Evil gives you a wide selection of ponchos. Mogo is, <laughs> Mogo is is on my wavelength. That's when I'll play Resident Evil when I can make Leon Kennedy wear a poncho. Um, but that does kind of lead me into my little rabbit hole for this week, Cole. Go for this, it. This morning, this morning, you know, as I do, I uh, got it in my head on my morning walk. I'm like, you know, I think I wanted to listen to like the first because my Star Wars audiobook collection. A lot of them are, you know, the abridged books on cassette. For the Bantam era, because that's all we have. Right. And they are, I've talked about this before. Usually those are split up by so- tape sides. So it's like 45 mm-hmm. minutes. They're four tracks because they yeah. compress them to two cassettes. You know, each cassette has two sides, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. So I'm like, you know, I could get through like this morning. I could get through like the first cassette of Shadows of the Empire because I'm, you know, that's the way I am. Well... The book opens up, standard Star Wars score, John Williams, full orchestral, you know, straight from the movie soundtrack. Mm -hmm. We're going into the book, and more of the same. Stuff comes up, you know, it's like, it's so part of the DNA, don't even recognize it. It's Mm -hmm. like, this is the Star Wars music. Well, um, did you see me talking about this in Discord earlier? Do you know what I'm talking about? I think I, I think I saw a little bit of rumblings. I didn't d- dig into it at all, so I don't I don't know for sure. Everything. I definitely went deeper into it. I think that a lot of people were expecting. Um, well, Shizor shows up pretty early, and at one point they played bits of his theme, and it sound I'm fairly certain the first time you hear it, if I remember correctly, it is the orchestral one, fully orchestral. Like, from Mm -hmm. the soundtrack. Yeah. But, later on, you get bits of it that are very clearly, like, MIDI. Like, MIDI sounds. Like, you know, like you'd hear on, like, a computer synth sound card of the time. Huh. And nothing else. Nothing else is done that way. So, I start thinking, I'm like, well... Okay, and I, I'm I truly at this moment do not remember <laughs> if that first one is the actual orchestra or the actual orchestra or if it is MIDI. But I start thinking, I'm like, well, okay, what does the timeline for this look like? Could that have something to do with this? Because I don't know anything about how these book how these audiobooks were released at the time. I don't know when the soundtrack came out versus the book. You know, there were so many questions. So I'm like, well, okay, all that Star Wars music existed already. So you could just throw that into the book. Maybe the soundtrack wasn't done. Well, turns out, soundtrack was recorded um, in the UK in, like, February of 96. The soundtrack itself is released in April of 96. The book comes out in May of 96. And I could not find a specific release date for the for the audiobook, the book on tape. But I'm assuming it came out at 
at earliest, like the same time as the book, not before, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the soundtrack has been done for two months by the time this book, or at least a month or something, by the time this book is coming out, this audiobook mm -hmm. is coming out. Yeah. And I just could not quite figure out why it's using why it's using this synthesized music that is really kind of in its final form like it's granted it's it's you know really stripped down because you can't have a full orchestra in midi of course but it's it's the same thing like the theme is there so i i just i pull my uh what's what's the book even called um the secrets of shadows of the empire by mark Cotavaz is a book from around that time that kind of goes behind the scenes. Yeah, I've got scenes. that book. Yep. Yeah. Um, I pulled it off the shelf and read about it. Just says it was recorded in February, and that's it. Doesn't talk about that at all. Um, and I start thinking, too, like, well, maybe it has something to do with the video game. Well, the, the N64 game, I think you could say famously, has the orchestral versions. And that's mm -hmm. why it's that's why it's like the same forty five seconds looped over and over again because there's only so much <laughs> music you can put on a cartridge, yeah. right? Um, and it loops well, um, and it uses some music that is not utilized a lot, but it, even though it, a lot of it comes from the original trilogy uh, score, but it's not like it was created for the game because the game was using the fully orchestrated versions and i've not played it on pc but i'm assuming the pc is the same way i don't know why because you know you can get cd rom audio on a on a computer game i don't know why that they wouldn't use the the true audio for the computer version um and also that came out like a year later or something so what i'm gonna do what i think i'm gonna do is I'm actually going to reach out to I think it's Random House now that owns Bantam Doubleday Dell, who are the original publishers of the audiobooks. I'm gonna reach out to somebody and I'm gonna see if I can't get to the bottom of this. I don't expect it to go anywhere because honestly, who cares at this point? But I looked on Wikipedia for anybody talking about this. I did like 20 different Google searches and various permutations could not find anybody talking about this and maybe that means it's not important <laughs> but <laughs> i'm curious i'm curious and i'm just like i i'm it not, is really strange one of those things that i'm like i'm not normally like this but i'm like i'm not satisfied i want to at least make an effort to reach out um i think the publisher is my best bet um at the very least, maybe they could give me a release date for the book that would, or for the audio book that would help, um, you know, would help give some context. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess my opt after that, my option would be, um, I don't know how you pronounce it, but the record label <laughs> that put out the, uh, <laughs> the put, that put out the soundtrack originally, mm -hmm. that would probably be my next best bet. Um, I certainly don't think I'd hear back from anybody at Lucasfilm, and I also think Lucasfilm that is too far, too far removed. That's like a completely different era. Um, so I don't know. Mm, I don't. I don't yeah. really expect this to go anywhere. Especially That's one of the ones you might could like uh, tweet about it, or you know, sit on social media in at like Pablo Hidalgo or something. Maybe someone knows something, right? Like he, he might know something about it just because he's been around a long time and yeah. might remember something about it. And well, and see, yeah, it, it's one of those things. It's one of the things that might pique someone's interest. And be like, "Oh, that is really weird," and and or something that somebody knows about. It's like, "Oh, I might be the only person that knows about." Well, and this. it's like I know that, like, uh, oh shoot, what's his name? He was like the the lead designer or something, like the lead on Shadows of the Empire. I know he floats around Twitter. When I was still on there, I was following him. Mm -hmm. Um, granted, that's the game, and you know that's the thing. It's like I feel like narratively these things were all talking to each other, but. Mm. I mean, the author like you think there'd be a lot of shared, you know, information at the very least, maybe. But that's what I mean. It's not like Steve Perry knows what's going on at LucasArts on a mm -hmm. nitty gritty programming game design level, you know. So it just seems weird. I want to, at the very least, know who did the music. Mm -hmm. Um, who knows? Maybe I just need to buy a copy. Maybe I just need to buy a copy of the of the cassette and. You know, it's, it's it's they're credited in there. Whoever did it, 
Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, you um, would assume. But see, I don't know, because at the same time, what if it's just music? Is I've never seen one of these. Like, what, mm -hmm. It's not quite the same thing. I'm going to grab one of my um, Tales of the Jedi cassettes. Okay. Actually, the Crimson Empire one is the one that's completely <laughs> So I'll grab a couple here. Hmm. And see if we get any actual information from them. If it, like, how much detail now. it's got in it. Yeah, to be fair, both of these, I think, are different. Um, it's a different publisher. I know mm -hmm. Tales of the Jedi is Time Warder, Time Warder uh, audiobooks. Yeah, the this cassette. I only have the jewel cases for the Tales of the Jedi ones, so they give me uh, literally nothing. Um, also, all the music in them is just composed by John Williams. Yeah. So I've got some of those audio cassette things, too. Let me grab those. I okay. know where they are. I can probably still see me on camera. <laughs> one of those things... It's, it's one of those things that I uh, have been... I've really held off on collecting these audio, these books on cassette because I'm really just not going to listen to them. Uh, sorry, Cole, I'm talking to the listeners. Uh, yeah, saying that You're saying that, like, I, I'm holding off on buying, on collecting these audiobooks, these books on cassette because really I, I'm not going to listen to them. Allison has a tape deck that, like, she listens to stuff on. I, generally speaking, I'm not going to go out of my way to do that because um, I have them all digitally. Like, that's just the easier way. But I do, I do really want them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like there, because it's just it's just such a cool thing to have. Uh, yeah. So I've got, I've got, Tales of the Jedi, Dark Lords of the Sith, both like both of them. Okay. But they're one of them. The original Tales of the Jedi says Time Warner. Yes. The other one does not specify. I'm pretty sure they're both Time Warner. Yep, yep, it is. It is. Okay. So those are both Time Warner. This Dark Empire 2 is Dark is Time Warner. And then I've got Spectre of the Past. It's Bantam Double Day. Okay, that's good. That's that's what we want. Let's see. If it says anything specific on here. This uh I'm glad we do video now because I've got this. I'm trying to get this other one out. It will not come out of here. God. Jesus. Oh, there's a divider in there. What? Yeah, you have to go the other side. down. Why? That's bizarre. I guess maybe to keep them from clacking together or something. Um, but yeah, these are so cool. You got these, especially for, you know, at least for Crimson Empire, you've got this sick Dave Dorman art. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, comic covers. Yeah. On the cassette. Inspector of the Past has the, has the book cover art on it which is nice that is so cool and and these these all one the only reason i bought these is because they're like they're nearly like mint condition they're really beautiful like not destroyed condition did you find them somewhere uh, i think i have price books ages ago my half price books is just dude what you find there is always a crapshoot man <laughs> <laughs> continually let me down um i found lots of great stuff and then other times you go in there and there's nothing so yeah, I don't really see much in the way of, like, credit information. Well, okay, I mean, that that's kind of what I was afraid of, which makes me think that, you know, Shadows of the Empire is not going to be any different. Um, so, I, I mean, it's... Yeah. I don't know. Um, it's, got, it's got a credit for Anthony Heald, who's the guy that does the narration for it. Yeah, he did But that's I think he, he somehow did, like, all of them. He was, like, the Mark Thompson of his day. Mm -hmm. He's he does a vast majority of those early ones. Um, yeah, and these these were all like three bucks a piece or something when I got them. So it's like that's kind of that, that's the reason I picked them up. It's like I don't it's like I this is not something I really care that much about. But the price and the condition, I'm like uh, I kind of got to. Well, it's like recently things. I picked up um I've got two now of the VHS copies of um the Young Indiana Jones Adventures. Yeah. But again, we're like mint condition, and I got them for like fifty cents a piece or something. <laughs> and one, and one of the first one I picked up, the reason I picked it up is because it's specifically the one that has Harrison Ford in it. Oh, okay. There's one episode that he's in, and it's like, oh, it's that one, and it's, it's like beautiful one. mint condition. <laughs> and so then I found another one, and it was like, oh, well, I've got a collection going now. Oh well, no, see, that's that's really, <laughs> you know, you, they're. They're not expensive. 
they're not in demand yeah. right if you go on ebay you look and it's like okay between 10 and 20 bucks will get you most of these things mm -hmm. that said three dollars for one i you know i'm snapping that up right away that is one that is yeah. a shoot first ask questions later i will find a plus spot for this when i get home mm -hmm. um yeah i think ebay and it makes me sad because i know there was a half price books i went to a long time ago and they had a ton of those audiobooks both cassette and cd copies of it and they were all dirt cheap but at the time i just don't i was like ah, i don't think i'll need those and they were all like on this huge like clearance desk and stuff. I was like, man, I wish I had picked up some of those at least. <laughs> but you know, hindsight. Yeah, and you know, of course, you know, like you said, those are in yours are in mint condition. Mm -hmm. You know, these are not frequently not like too cared for. Yeah. You know, the but... only thing that's wrong with them is they still have a sticker on them that I'm afraid to try to peel off. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> Well, I, like, I probably like I might take my heat gun to it or something at some point see if I can get them off. Try it that way, yeah. But I haven't I haven't tried yet. <laughs> and even if you get residue, you can usually use like goo gun or something and get it off. It's just so sketchy with uh, with uh, that cardboard. It's like ah, I just don't want it to like you know something to soak into it. And... No, and yeah, you see <laughs> stuff like in the uh... oh, I don't know. I'm looking at these on eBay now, and I'm afraid I'm going to do something stupid. But, uh, like here's a it's always bad when you search for something you're like oh, i'm just curious and you'll get it like, that's dirt cheap i'm just gonna do it <laughs> exactly like here's a lot for 20 bucks it's the back to war the kratos trap courtship of princess leia um it looks like assault at salonia planted pla planet of twilight shadows of the empire and dark apprentice a very odd assortment of books yeah like no complete trilogies or series or anything no. just <laughs> But still, like, hard to pass out. I'm closing these tabs. Closing these tabs. Just go away. I don't want to think about it. If well, I leave it open, honestly, I'll probably do something. Honestly, they're a little cheaper than I feel like on average than they were the last time I looked. So mm. I'm feeling feeling pretty good about that. My ability to snap those up sometime after the yeah. holidays when I'm doing less Get the hankering in your... on other people. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, but anyway... That's been my adventure for the day. I yeah. tomorrow I'm gonna start doing my outreach in earnest and trying to find something. I'll be mm -hmm. shocked if I even hear back, you know, because obviously Bantam Double Day Dell I, is owned by Random House now, which is mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, huge massive. Conglomerate. So if I can get a hold of anybody, even if just that, even if it's just to hear back, like, hey, sorry, we don't have that information. We don't know anything mm -hmm. about that. I will be shocked. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> but I don't know. Sometimes, you know, you see YouTube videos and stuff of people reaching out and hearing back from people you would never, yeah, you never to know hear back from. So sometimes you never know where somebody's got like a keyword, you know, notification thing on and right. hears about it or somebody, somebody shares it somewhere. And it's like, Oh, I know that information. Well, it happens all the time. Like with, uh, it happened, you know, you see it on Twitter. Someone starts talking about something weird and then the creator will come out of the woodwork and mm. be like, yeah, this is why this happened or. Yeah. Um, or someone posts a random image on Reddit and it's like someone posts up like, that's me. <laughs> and it's like, what? What? Reddit would be a good place to bring it up too. I do think yeah. though, uh, just, I guess probably the EU subreddit would be the place it would get the most traction if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. Um, who knows? Maybe I mean maybe someone there just knows something. I would be shocked yeah. though because I was digging on talk pages on Wikipedia. I was looking everywhere, and mm -hmm. it just seemed like uh, I hope no one at work is listening to this because <laughs> I spent <laughs> a lot of work time today, <laughs> this morning, digging that, digging around trying to find that info. Hey, as long as you're still getting your work done. Hey, it's I got fine. all my work done today. I did. I it's did. fine. Um, yeah, yeah. Little... I've actually got something weird to to show off too. Oh please, it's uh in a different vein, but equally weird and cool. So let's see if you can see this. Okay. The princess tapes. Yeah. What is so, this? This is a fanzine from 1982. What? Where did you get that? My sister and my brother found it at a, uh, like an antique shop that... where she lives in Virginia and bought it for me for my birthday. It is from 1982. It, it has a full color illustration on the front. Uh, if you're looking it up, you can find a lot of information on it, actually. But look up the Crystarian Press. 
you'll have better luck finding it on like one of the like fan and wikis or something. Yeah, fan lore. I'm seeing it right here. Yeah. I haven't really read any of this yet, but like it's in it's like a leather binding and it's oh really God. nice. It was only there's 500 copies of it printed apparently is what it says in there. And it's got a whole bunch of artwork and it's a it's an impressive collection of stuff. Yeah, I was going to say it looks like right here I'm, there's a couple here, I'm going to drop this in the chat, and then I'll put it in the description of this video, assuming that description stays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you can find it on YouTube. I will try to remember to put it in the show notes as well. Um, yeah. Uh, but if you'll notice that, that main illustration on the front of it, it depicts... It's, it's all about... It's all Leia stuff. But it's from 1982. So this predates Return of the Jedi, and it depicts her with a lightsaber. <laughs> And the piece of artwork from the front of it apparently is titled The Other. Is in There Is Another. <laughs> like that was what they... So, someone, somebody a, was calling it and they were right. <laughs> that is such a read. Like, I, it's, yeah. not, like it's not complete. It's obviously not unheard of, right? No, no, no. Um, But, or like not... It, it is a fascinating glimpse into the fandom of the time. No, that is so... So cool, and some of this, some of this art, some of these, like this fan lore page that I linked to has some. It's got a whole bunch of the art. Yeah, I saw, yeah. I found that too when I looked it up. Yeah, all the art's great. It is. I'm sorry, I'm completely hung up on this now. Yeah, this is copy three fifty six of five hundred. That is crazy. <laughs> is this like a a family tree that someone has come up with? I'm seeing images. Yeah, yeah. Of... Apparently, a lot of this is like Alderanian lore stuff. That the, that this person they's, they've come up with and like you delved into the backstory because none of it existed at the time. So, wow. I said I haven't really read any of it yet, but I've definitely flipped through it at the art and stuff, and it's like, man, this is pretty crazy. And there was one, there was one like picture. I think it may have been actually the picture of like one of the. Um, I don't know it's one of the characters. It might be based on one of the people that you know wrote for this, but. It looks like freaking Ben Solo. It does look like Ben Solo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is so that weird. That is weird. Some but, of this yeah. art is incredible. And actually, yeah, the art's like, all like pretty uniformly pretty good. Yeah, and a lot of it looks. Um, there's a lot of it on this page. This page is actually. I, I don't want to say comprehensive because I don't know how many pages that has, but there is a lot of stuff here. Yeah. I think this is technically like volume two of the princess tapes from what I saw. There was like a, like a prologue issue of it or something before this. It's even got like a, it's got a section that's like a guide to how to make a princess Leia costume. That is so cool. <laughs> it's got, it, it is just really interesting and just such a strange artifact of the time. And what my, brother said this they had a ton of these things like stacks of them and they got the one that had like the coolest art and was like the most complete looking and such because there was a bunch of them and i was like man so if i ever end up going and visiting we're definitely going to go to this place and see if any of it's still out. there because i just want to see all of it even if i don't get any other ones it's just a fascinating artifact of the, the fandom of the time it, cole i cannot explain to you how interested in this thing i am i yeah that is yeah, truly. I was blown away. I was like, "My gosh, this thing is crazy! What what is going on with this?" And well, it's just. I mean, it's it's interesting. Obviously, this is not a, a uh, you know, this is not um, a novel thing to say, but it's just interesting to see that fans have always been fans, nerds have always been nerds, doing the mm -hmm. same crap that we do now. Yeah. Um. Exactly. I, there's, I, I actually, I think I'm probably going to read this uh, this page. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's one of those things. This is a wiki. It looks like so. Mm -hmm. It's very clearly just a media wiki, wiki actually. So it is just a wiki. Um, I'm very much hoping that this is. Uh, it looks like actually a lot of this content might have just been pulled from the zine, possibly um very well might have been yeah but i will say that like the ben solo art is not here so mm -hmm. it is this is not a comprehensive page some of this stuff is just weird yeah though yeah mogo just said something about 
looking it up on eBay. And actually, I did find a copy of this on eBay for about 30 bucks. That's just one of those things that... I don't know. It's just... It's just... I think I ended up searching, searching like Princess Tape Star Wars or something and it found it. Yeah. Wow. This is wild. That is that is such a cool gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, this is completely something I would never have even thought of. Like, you know, it's one of those things unless you see it, you're like, oh, I don't even, wouldn't have even known that this existed or even, you know, how how professional it all is and everything. And it's like, you know, the, like... It's all like, I'm assuming done on like typewriter style or something. But yeah, like it's I mean, just. I don't... Jeez. Well, then there's one thing that stands out to me too is like there's this little. Uh, it looks like there's a scan of the family tree, calls out things like the fall of the old republic, the Clone Wars, and then, oddly enough, specifically worded as uh, the first Galactic Empire. <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, is, again, not not a, com a completely out there thing to say. But Palpatine does say that verbatim. Uh, First in Galactic of the Sith. Empire. So, yeah. I do think that is... This whole thing is very cool. Jeez. Well, dang. That's awesome. Yeah, like I said, I've had this for a couple months now, but I was waiting for us to have another interlude so we could, and I was going to do a little bit of research on it and stuff too, just because it's interesting. But yeah, yeah it is a, it is a really cool thing. And I'm, I'm glad I've got it in my collection, even if it's, it literally is fan fiction. It you is, know, but it, it's, yeah. it is, but it is such a cool piece of fan fiction and because of how professional it is and the era it's from, it's just like, man, this is crazy. Yeah. And I, I wonder just... if this person read like all, like, the Han Solo novels and like the Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Like, I wonder if that stuff is like referenced in these. Maybe I I would be sh well it, okay because part of me says like I'd be shocked if that person, if whoever was responsible for this, did not read those things. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like uh, how I don't, I truly just have no idea how public any of that stuff was. Like, did people know yeah. that Splinter of the Mind's Eye existed? Did they know mm -hmm. it was a Star Wars book? You know, yeah. like, cause it's not, it, if you it see didn't it have Star distance, Wars like on the cover of no, it. No, no. If you see it from a distance, you're not going to know that it's Star Wars necessarily. Um, mm -hmm. I think at that time, especially in 1978, I think there were a lot of things that were trying to be Star Wars. So I wouldn't be shocked yeah. if there was a lot of people who passed on Splinter of the Mind's Eye thinking it was a knockoff of Star mm -hmm. Wars because you just have kind of a silhouette that looks vaguely like Vader on the cover, you mm -hmm. know, like, so I don't know. That's a. That is wild. And yeah, fanfic is fanfic. I don't think either of us, either of us are super high on that, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, not that there's anything wrong with it, of course. It's just, it, you know. Yeah, it's just something I'm not very interested in. No. Delving into personally, but. Me neither. For the this, most part. This is pretty dang cool. <laughs> with some notable exceptions, you know. So yeah. Jo Joe Bongiorno has worked on, and then the, uh, the fan sort of the Jedi trilogy that I look forward to reading whenever I get there. Um, <laughs> just cur just as one of those, just kind of a curiosity um, more than mm -hmm. anything. Um, and Hey, it's more of a sort of the Jedi than Lucasfilm's ever going to give us. So, it um, certainly seems that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think I definitely think that material from when the original trilogy was coming out before everything was answered is because like, it looks like there was someone who said that Leia has a sister mm -hmm. and it's like, not quite, you know, <laughs> like, and that, I think to me, that is the the thing that is most at one of the things that was most out of left field in return of the Jedi. It's not, again, not unbelievable, but, mm -hmm. to the, but like, there's definitely some like a romance potentially set up between Luke and Leia. I mm -hmm. wouldn't go to brother and sister immediately. No, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> uh, anyway, that seems like a fun kind of random article from 1982, but I do have, or I did, where'd it go? Did um, you lose your random article? I might've. Oh God. I did. <laughs> Did I? How did I do that? Well, I had one. 
It was pretty good, too. Oh, I know what it was. I know what it was. You can just find it again. I've got to try to find it. Um, you can probably go to your history, too, and find it. I could. Oh, no, I found it. I found it. Okay. <laughs> this uh, this one's from a book that we've read, actually. But I think Ooh. it's just kind of weird enough that I want to go back to it a little bit. Um, this article is entitled, Unidentified Species, uh, parentheses, Vegari. Uh, that tells you the world that we're moving into. I'm going to post the link here in the chat, and I'll go ahead and drop it in the random article, in the description for this video. Um, I always forget, an article from the archives, not random article. Anyway, so that's in the description now. You should be able to find it there, and it will be in the show notes, as always. Um, do you, does everyone know that I put those in the show notes? I don't know if people care about that or look at that. I link it every week. <laughs> I don't know if anyone is looking. Uh, maybe I'll start adding my own custom UTMs so that Wikipedia will, whoever is watching the analytics for Wikipedia will be like, what is this Obroa Skywalkers that keeps sending things to our website? Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, just a reminder that you're always being tracked on the internet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's a, there's an, there's an error on this, on this page. Let me read it first. And then I want to get okay. to it. Um, unidentified species, Vigari. Uh, it opens with a quote. Understand the reality of the situation. The Vigari have killed them, all of them. If not in this battle, then in battles to come. There is nothing we can do to help them. All we can do is focus our resources towards the Vigari's ultimate destruction so that others may live. Force Commander Thrawn on the species. A species? It's supposed to be was. Or species... Species is a singular plural noun, isn't it? A species uh, was, not a species were? Hmm... This is grammar. That's a weird one. This is grammar. No, I, that's one of those ones. I, that's one of those ones. I'm like, I, I don't, I don't feel like confident enough to say either. one way or the other. Um, a species uh, was slash were captured by the Vegari species uh, in 27 BBY. The Vegari slaver fleet imprisoned members of the species within zero G plastic bubbles, using them as living shields during their attack on the Garoon species homeworld. Force Commander Thrawn, the commander of the Chiss assault cruiser Springhawk told his human companion Maris Farasi to understand that he would not be able to kill them while fighting the Vegari and that they could not help. Instead, they could focus the destruction of the Vegari. Uh, behind the scenes, the species appeared in the 2007 novel Outbound Flight, written by Timothy Zahn. That seems unnecessary. They appear once. It's definitely unnecessary, but it's also incorrect. <laughs> In what way? The novel came out in 2006. Hang on. I'm going to put somebody on blast. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the uh, edit history. There's nothing on this talk page. Oh, this is edit. Where's the history? Come on. I clicked the wrong button. I'm a fool. History. There's One of those go. novels I have in my head. I know when it came out. <laughs> Who's looked at it? Yeah, I, be I believe it. Um, Okay, I'm not actually going to put this person on blast. Looks like there's a couple people have edited it um, recently, actually. It always shocks me that, like, when real people... We stumble upon an article that real people have edited recently. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it looks like just a couple of minor edits, like, in the kind of tens of bytes uh, recently. So it looks like we had an initial yeah. commit you know, on... Oh. This is a new article. I think this explains a lot. This is from uh, just a couple months ago, September 12th of this year. This was created. Mm. So Interesting. I, it's one of those things where it's like I definitely understand the need and the desire to have a comprehensive um, to have a comprehensive record of Star Wars, but I do think we can – I don't want to say do a little better than this because that's – I you know, obviously this person did a service by creating the page. Um but we don't like factually incorrect information, especially when you can no. easily tell that, uh, like outbound flight is is linked to. Is linked to yeah, and there is a 2007 date for the paperback, but you know, the the main release date is 2006. It's so 2006 you know. indeed. So, um, looks like we'll have to make some changes. I definitely want to look up what the correct uh verb form of is. yeah, and there's there's also grammatically in the. The sentence where he's talking about, let's see, how human companion Maris Ferrasi to understand that he would not be able not to kill them. Well, it's a, 
I, I think it's right, but it's just a really it's strange, a really strange wording. way to worry to word all of it. But and it might be better to you know better to way to phrase that. And that's one of those things where I'm just like, I, I don't want to talk about grammar on this podcast. It's yeah. To talk about the intricacies of editing a Wikipedia article, but I think grammar, that's one of those things we'll want to work on off the podcast, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I think as I, this is, I think this is an interesting article for a number of reasons. Um, well, one talks about Thrawn. Never a bad, always a quick way to get to my heart in terms of articles. Um, but so I don't know. I always wonder too, how many links is too many, you know, whenever you're Mm -hmm. reading an article, but, um, it looks like actually the battle of Garoon is was the attack. The word attack is linked to battle of Garoon. And it looks like that actually has a fairly significant, right up there <laughs> yeah it's not bad it's um, got also, several different sections and paragraphs also it's in canon i think i forgot about this oh interesting interesting the first battle between the Vigari pirates and chis ascendancy senior captain mithron Nerudo, core name thrawn that seems excessive we know who that is <laughs> uh, took place in the unknown regions. The battle which commenced Thrawn's operations to eliminate the pirates resulted in Thrawn retrieving a Vigar gravity well generator. Oh, this is lesser. This is a uh, lesser evil. Mm-hmm. That book is just so long. I'm not surprised that I don't remember this. Yeah, I'm surprised. Did, did I don't remember it specifically naming? Oh, okay. It is just unidentified battle actually in the canon article. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's just it's la- labeled as an unidentified battle when you go to the canon side of it. So that, that makes sense. I was about to say, I was like, I don't remember it specifically being called out as the Garoon battle. And it's like, okay, the battle itself was referenced, which is true. And like the procurement of the gravity well generator and all that stuff happened. But I... a lot of the details aren't the same or detailed because the battle itself isn't portrayed. (laughs) I was going to say, like, sure, sure, sure. But uh, the first clash between Thrawn, but this is from the behind the scenes. This is a canon article. I apologize, everybody. Uh, The first clash between Thrawn and the Vagari is mentioned in Star Wars, the Star Wars, in Star Wars canon in the 2021 novel, Thrawn Ascendancy, Lesser Evil, the final volume, yada, yada, yada. Uh, The Star Wars Legends continuity, the Battle of the Garoon Homeworld, in which Force Commander uh, Thrawn stole a Vagari gravity well projector, appeared in a 2006 novel, Outbound Flight, also written by Zahn. It doesn't look like there's anything that confirms this as the Battle of Garoon. I don't necessarily think these two articles should be linked. Yeah, it's one of those weird things. Like, I understand why they are, but maybe they shouldn't be. <laughs> I, I was going to, yeah, like, I really just. It's curious because it's like, they're clearly intended to be the same thing, but there's no, like concrete i know i know and that's that's the thing and as i i maybe there's something you know i am still very much an amateur editor i am i don't want to be maybe there's something going on here that i am just not privy to mm-hmm. that makes it like uh makes me wish robert was just on the podcast honestly so he could just <laughs> answer these questions in real time because um, yeah it's like we specifically don't know where this happened we just know that thrawn soul of Vagari gravity well generator Mm-hmm. Um. So, I don't know. We'll have to check in with Robert on this one. I I don't. I can't say for certain that they should not be connected. I know in my head, without some sort of actual reasoning, I would not connect them. I would not specifically mm-hmm. say this is the Battle of Garoon. Uh, because I don't know that it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um. I also wonder, did we actually get a mention of the Garoon in, uh, no, the Garoon are not canon either. Right. There was no specific mention of the Garoon in, uh, the Ascendancy trilogy. So, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's weird because it's like, I think the way it's been linked makes sense in that sense it's like 
It's like, oh, you go to the canon article, and it's it goes becomes unidentified battle, Vagari. So it's like that article should exist, and I think maybe the only link between it ought to be maybe that behind the scenes section. Yeah. Well, and not the actual canon legends thing, but that's also extremely pedantic, and that's they're clearly here. It, it's it's clearly <laughs> like. Zahn is clearly referencing the other book. But you can't. Is the thing. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I know. (laughs) And it's like, it's funny because we are always like, we are like the freaking, you know, the feels guy nerd screaming. I don't know not to describe memes and not to describe 4chan memes even more so on the podcast. (laughs) But like, we, whenever time in that trilogy, when he mentions something from Legends, we're like, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and so it's like it's weird to fight that urge because I know that when I was reading this at the time I was I did the, exactly that I was like yeah I know what this is but we don't know what this is mm-hmm. we don't know specifically what this is um so yeah yeah it's it's a weird one like yeah I think maybe what what happened is that the behind like you should get rid of the link the direct link between the canon and legends thing. Or maybe just and just have a behind the scenes thing on both of them. That seemed that they that, kind of cross link back to each other. Yeah, and like have the you know the specific article linked there instead it's of one of those things that to me that makes perfect sense. But I am I I am not confident enough in my Wikipedia ing to go in there and make that change because it seems like such a major shift. Also, I don't know how you would go about unlinking a page. <laughs> mm-hmm. in the tabs like that um but mogo to answer your question we are not putting anybody on blast specifically <laughs> um i specifically <laughs> left the names out because i don't want to put anybody on blast because like this is a yeah. I, this is a it's an important article as are they all um so um and uh tom enjoy babylon 5 babylon 5 is a good experience <laughs> um so yeah i i don't know uh Welcome, Tom and Austin are in our chat now. Uh, well, Tom, I guess only briefly, but uh, I don't know. That went. I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't expect that to turn into what it did. <laughs> <laughs> I will fever with you. That went a little deeper than I meant it to. Um, but all the same, yeah, I think this article could just use a little work. I I also think that given enough time, Timothy's on would have named the species in the bubbles. Mm-hmm. I just think he didn't, he yeah. didn't get his chance. He didn't yeah. get his And Thomas saying that you're a lot quieter than me, apparently. That seems to always be the case. I can, the only thing I can really do there is, uh, turn you down, which makes everybody have to turn everything else up, mm. which of course, if you're listening to the podcast, you know, the way it's been for the last, uh, going on five years at this point, um, which is terrifying. Uh, this means nothing to you. Everything sounds normal, but on the stream, uh, I don't exactly know what's going on there. So I'm going to turn Cole down. <sighs> so hopefully you can crank everything else up if you're watching the stream. Apologies if you are not and are just tired of me talking about the stream. Um, <laughs> Would it be a Ben podcast without an appeal to authority? In this case, Wikipedia. No, Austin, it would not. <laughs> <laughs> I uh oh I don't know I I kind of like I know there's nothing else to say but I kind of want to keep talking about this so I think we need to <laughs> to move on to something else because I'm just I am kind of lost in this and it's a good feeling you know getting lost mm-hmm. in the in the the mystery of the midi <laughs> um shadows of the empire bits on the audiobook and then getting lost in the Wikipedia, like to me, I feel like this is the essence of an Abroa Skywalker's episode. Um, it really is. It really is. It, and it feels right. I gotta say, it does feel right. Um, it is how we do things. It is, and it's maybe a little early in the podcast, but I feel like it's we've we've kind of reached a point. Cole, do you mind sharing what we're going to be reading going forward? I'm not saying this is the end of the podcast, but I'm saying yeah. like I'm I'm really well, dying. It might to spawn know. more discussion anyway. Ex- so. Exactly, that's kind of why I'm yeah. saying let's do this now. Yeah.
It's like, uh, drum roll, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, we're doing Order 66. It's the obvious thing. <laughs> I knew it was. I yeah. knew it was. <laughs> I did look at several other books. And uh, see, I looked, I considered just going to finish off the uh, Bounty Hunter Wars trilogy as well. I looked hard at Truce at Bakura. Um, Those are I all looked good. at Scoundrels in Allegiance. See that? Okay, so I was like, see, it's been a while since we've done a Zon. It has. Scoundrels would have been interesting because it would have been the first time that I've ever had to buy a book for this podcast. Oh, really? Because I don't I own I don't own Scoundrels. Um, but not again, not out of any. Just one of those things that when I'm looking to put in a ten dollar uh order to thrift books, it just hasn't ever mm-hmm. come up. I don't ever see it. Right. I, I stop at other things first. Um, right, right. So not out of any avoidance, but yeah, I don't own it. Yeah. Uh, and am I right in saying you haven't read Allegiance or Scoundrels? I have read Choices of One. Because you read Choices I, of One. Yes, I, that's right. I have not read Allegiance, though. So I remember thinking, who are these Stormtroopers? Whatever. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Hand of Judgment. I love those guys. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, it's one of those ones I really – it's one of those things I'm sad about that we never got another book for him because Zahn apparently had an idea for another book. And it's like, ah, oh, that sounds awesome. Because I think what he – I think what he talked about was that he was going to write uh, – I feel like he was going to write another – he had an idea for another trilogy, I think. And then he was going to, like, tie several different things together, like pulling the Stormtroopers and the Chiss, the uh, Hand of Hand the of hand the, of Thrawn or stuff. Or Hand of Thrawn, yeah. And, like, all kind of, like, link it all together with something – I don't remember. I remember exactly. I remember he talked about it at length at one point. I was I, like, "Oh, that sounds so cool! I wish you does, could have done that." It does, and I know that we've <laughs> talked about this before in the past. Um, Hand of Thrawn is still one of those things. I think is you know people always point to Sword of the Jedi and you know other things like that that are left unopened. I think the Hand of Thrawn and the Empire of the Hand is one of the bigger loose ends from Legends. Because I don't know if mm-hmm. it shows up too much, you know, uh, going into Legacy of the Force, Fate of the Jedi, that era. But no, no, it definitely doesn't. That, and see, that's like that's so it's so odd to me that that's out there and it exists and it's just this giant loose end that we know very little about. They just kind of show up in uh, the Hand of Thrawn and then nothing. <laughs> we get basically <laughs> nothing for the rest of time um, until we get into the New Jedi Order, where you know, where's Jagfell and but even then. He's always coming to us. We never go to them. So, right. Yeah, I don't know. That's, uh, it's one of those things that I always feel like I'm woefully, I, I, I'm woefully uneducated on. And I'm realizing, I realize, oh, there's just not that much to be educated on. Yeah. It's, it's one of those like cool big idea things that unfortunately that Zahn just never had the opportunity to go back to. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, I don't know. Order 66, though. I feel like this is going to be useful. Order 66. To, having just read Bloodlines, without spoiling anything for anybody. Yeah, that was that, part of the impetus for me picking it. I was like, I really kind of want to get these done before you finish up Legacy of the Force. Right. I know it's going to take a while. Sure. At the, at the pace you do go at it. But I'm also like, <laughs> there's definitely like intertwining threads from all of those. And I don't want you to get contaminated by accident no, and that's that's kind of what i was afraid of was like i i figured i'd be fine through the next two books of legacy of the forest since we're on mm-hmm. you know karen travis isn't writing them but my god the next am i correct in assuming oh my god i am the next karen travis book is sacrifice yeah i don't i don't want to read that <laughs> Yeah, understand. It just sucks. It just sucks because you know I'm reading the, I'm reading Convergence right now, and that is like a good High Republic story. That it's like you know only as hopeful as the High Republic stories ever are, which is not very. But you know it's like <laughs> it's it's still got that feeling. It's still uplifting in its own way. And then of course the Han Solo adventures I'm reading too, alongside like hey, that's good too. That's just fun. It's a fun romp through the corporate sector. And then I start thinking about Legacy of the Force again. And I'm like, Jason, why? (laughs) Like, why? She's wrong. She's not right. Stop listening to her. Um, 
Mm. It's mm. just so mm. painful. What do you mean you lead the secret police now? And I just, <laughs> you know, I just, it hurts. It hurts. Mm -hmm. It's so bad to read. And I, I, sorry, I'm thinking about it again. And I'm just, you know, I look at sacrifice, and I'm like, I. That's the star by star of this of this series, yeah. right? Sacrifice I, was published before True Colors or sixty six, so there's probably not any problems there as far as like spoiler stuff. Wait, it was true, but there's stuff from yeah, True I'm, Colors I'm, that's I'm looking, in Bloodlines. But that means it showed up there first, but True Colors got published later. Oh, so isn't that I, interesting? That is weird. I'm, I'm just looking at. I've, I've got a timeline of her books pulled up, and Bloodlines was published. Looks like it was late '06, and then Sacrifice was early '07, and then True Color. Let me see what the actual dates on those may have been like really close together. Sure. Let's um, see. Sacrifice. Sorry, Mogo. Mogo says he's was... back to only listening to the first half of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do apologize sorry. about that. Yeah. Yeah. So Sacrifice was published in May 29th of '07. And True Colors was October 30th of 07. Oh, okay. So six months. So a few months, yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so that, that's interesting. I didn't I didn't realize the exact timeline of all that stuff. And then know. after True Colors was Revelation and then Order 66. So and it's funny. Between those is the Clone Wars novelization. Which I that also... One's, that one's such a, like, a weird, um, uh, like double-edged sword of a public of a book that she wrote because the clone wars is kind of what killed the rest of her stuff yeah that's very, very unfortunate that yeah that's, yeah that's the <laughs> it's funny that she didn't that she's the one that wrote that book engineered her own destruction yeah um in more ways than one possibly <laughs> um no, because it's in, what is it, is it in True Colors that we start getting numbers of the clones that are in the galaxy, and it's like, mm -hmm. oh, this is where all of this happened. This is where all of this started. Um, of course, no offense to Karen Travis, I think her books are very good. Um, and apparently there was even plans for her to write just a Boba Fett novel at some point. Oh. And see, Said okay. after Legacy of the Force. I will got, say. got canceled, obviously. Okay, Spoiler. He was supposed to. He's all set up to die in Bloodlines, and now you're telling me he lives through Legacy of the Force. Well, he got canceled, so maybe he got canceled because he died. <laughs> mm, okay, <laughs> and we just never got that story where Boba Fett dies. Um, yeah. I had a feeling he probably didn't die. Karen Travis, she went farther than I thought she would in making letting him cry. Mm -hmm. I cert. I, I certainly don't think there's any way that she's gonna kill him. <laughs> I think that is a step too far. Um, <laughs> But it's funny because, you know, people are just like, you know, she's always like, she writes all these hard ass characters and everybody's like, oh, Karen Driver is like hard military sci-fi. And it's like, yeah, you're not wrong. And, you know, she's always talking about how, Mandal you know, the, the narrative is that she hates Jedi and that thinks the Mandalorians are the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. um, I never would have suspected she would be the one to let Boba Fett cry. <laughs> you know, I, mm -hmm. it's, she, uh, Yeah. I don't know. For as much as she's, you know, like you said, the hard military stuff, she's also gets deep into the characters and the emotions of it all. I know, I know, <laughs> and I, just, I feel like I've been misled over these many years by the Star Wars community at large. You know, mm -hmm. obviously people look at the Republic Commando books very highly, but they talk about... I just feel like... I, well, that's one thing I've learned on this, this, this lifelong journey through Legends at this point, is just that I just can't really trust anyone else's opinion on any single book <laughs> mm. because for every um rogue squadron that's amazing there's a dark saber that everybody hates and i'm like oh i thought that was fine mm -hmm. I thought that was fun i thought that was good um moga saying we'll never get a story where boba fett dies we can only hope we can honestly <laughs> can only hope uh honest i uh, truly though i i know there was a lot of talk in our Discord, a lot of special, or the Skyhoppers Discord, it's not ours, sorry. Um, there was a lot of speculation that Boba Fett would die in Book of Boba Fett. Um, mm -hmm. And really, and <laughs> there were points in that final episode that looked kind of likely. It looked like it might mm -hmm. happen. Um, you know, whenever he's fighting all the pikes with Din, and then, of course, the showdown with Cad Bane, like, 
I would have never forgiven Star Wars if Cad Bane killed Boba Fett, but, you know, <laughs> it didn't happen, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, yeah, I hope we don't ever see Boba Fett die. It's fine if he does, but if they have to do it like Luke in Infinities, where it's like, yeah, Luke Skywalker died, but it's only because he's a human. Like, he probably died mm -hmm. peacefully of old age, right? Or, you know, they better let Timura Morrison, like, give him the most epic death, like, battle ever, you know? Oh, I still don't want it. I still don't want it, but I still yeah. don't want it, but, you know, they could make it pretty epic if they, they, could. If they really they could for it. They could. Um, I think Boba Fett, though, especially the direction they've kind of taken him in canon, this is definitely more of a... As he gets older, well, I mean, it's not that different than Legends Boba Fett, really. Like, as he gets mm -hmm. older, he's more, uh, he's just m more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Introspective is, well, maybe the right word. It just seems like he mm -hmm. is more, con he's less concerned about money. He's less concerned about uh, just being the best bounty hunter and is more concerned about, like, what matters to him personally. Mm -hmm. um and i think obviously going into legacy of the force we see that in book of Boba Fett, we see that maybe less pronounced but still there um and yeah, civilized is a good word fetmatic yeah it <laughs> is more civilized it is um Mogul, yeah, I, will, I, I really will... hope i hope that he continues to be a part of the mando era I do too. that they and i i hope they maybe tie him into the mandalorian stuff still yeah like you know the actual mandalorian like culture stuff and I, maybe let him integrate into that somewhat. I wouldn't be shocked because there was so much contention in Mando season two, you know, whenever mm -hmm. he meets Cosca Reeves and those two are like at each other's throats in that cantina. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there have been so, there's been so much. I'm not a Mandalorian, but I wear the armor. Mm -hmm. That makes me think, well, okay, sure. Boba Fett was being tough. Cause he wanted his armor back. Well, now he's got the armor back. Now it seems like he's relaxed mm -hmm. a little bit. He seems like he's more, he's got his priorities more in line. Maybe he's more interested in learning and about that part especially, of his heritage. Especially if Din ends up, you know, being like a major figure in the Mandalorian, like resurgence. He's right. already friends with Din and, <laughs> you know, could totally yeah. see that coming, coming together in a satisfying way, hopefully. Well, and plus, you know, for a long time in Legends, Boba Fett was a Mandalorian, you know, uh, um, <laughs> to be fair, George Lucas has gone on record saying that Boba Fett was never a Mandalorian. Um, mm -hmm. He was not, but, you know, who cares what George Lucas thinks? I do. I yeah. care. But he, uh, if we look at, like, John Favreau being kind of the main showrunner, you know, with Dave Filoni of The Mandalorian and what John Favreau seems to prioritize and enjoy in Star Wars stories, I think a Mandalorian Boba Fett is still likely, <laughs> even mm -hmm. though he's been very... Um, He's been very, uh, you know, anti that for the, mm -hmm. this leading up to this whole thing, um, especially because Din, I think Din's arc will be, it kind of has already started to be breaking out of, you know, the, the, the children of the watch, the children of the watch, breaking out of that and finding what he believes a Mandalorian to be and, you know, who follows him and for what reasons, and, you know, having his own mm -hmm. clan with Grogu being a part of it, um, I mean, Boba Fett could very easily slot into that um, on some level. So, I don't know. I don't know. I think Book of Boba Fett, all in all, left me with more questions than answers in a lot of ways. But what I was saying, the reason I brought all this up, is this new, you know, air quotes, civilized Boba Fett, this more civilized Boba Fett, to me strikes me as more of a ride off into the sunset kind of character rather than die in some sort of epic battle kind of thing now what i think doesn't matter <laughs> but that's kind of the that's kind of the vibe that i get is that that's kind of the direction they might be taking him if they were to eventually do away with his character um mm -hmm. and they, they've kind of integrated the whole you know family is more than a bloodline mandalorian proverb thing into the the children of the watch idea like that's that that's almost their whole thing is that you know it's not about you know direct blood descendant like you get adopted into the clan and you become a mandalorian by that not necessarily you know your parents were mandalorians or you're a mandalorian which is kind of where boba fett's at depending on whether or not they go with Django as a mandalorian or not i think i thought they well they did they did right well, 
he's got the armor and like that's why Din I mean Din shouldn't need it but that's why Din accepts that he has the armor because mm -hmm. it passed down to him because Jango was a Mandalorian and right it's like okay well you got it from your father I mm -hmm. can't you know I can't dispute that yeah so it's one of those things that even if Boba Fett isn't Mandalorian now he still could become Mandalorian yes. if he wants to if he just he just, has to, he just has to claim it basically yeah mm -hmm. um which I think could be a good story for part of the mm -hmm. Mandalorian or maybe Book of Boba Fett season two. Just saying. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Din is going, you know, Fatmatic brings up that Din is going back to Mandalore to cleanse himself. And I'm taking that as meaning like, I think it's likely that Din could end up back on Mandalore, meet other Mandalorians and be like, this Children of the Watch stuff is nuts. So like, I don't mm -hmm. think we need to do this anymore. There are so many more things that a Mandalorian could be. Because, I mean, let's just imagine, remember, whenever he meets Bo-Katan, and they all take their helmets off, and he's just like, excuse me? <laughs> Stares a Mandalorian. <laughs> what? <laughs> exactly. So Same I... reaction he had to a uh, freaking... <laughs> What's his name, man? <laughs> I'm losing his name now. Uh, other Boba like... Fett armor guy. Oh, yeah, Cobb Vanth. Yeah, Cobb exactly. Vanth, yeah. Same thing. He's like... What are you doing? <laughs> you need to give that back. I'm taking that. Um, well, it's like, I just think that... I don't know. I, I'm okay with Boba Fett not officially being a Mandalorian. He's a Mandalorian in my heart. And, you know, that's enough. That's enough. He doesn't have to canonically be one. However, if they decide to do that, I will still be thrilled. If that's mm -hmm. the direction they decide to take it. And I think there are... A multitude of ways that we get there and i think that uh, you know star wars has been all about found family uh in this disney era and i think that we have there are too many different convergent storylines or storylines that feel like they will be convergent to not have din end up maybe not being mandalore even though i think that's likely too mm -hmm. i think him having kind of a clan of his own as yeah. an offshoot of the Children of the Watch, where it's like you do have people like Boba Fett, and you have maybe Bo Katan joins him. You mm. have, um, because I mean, that to me is still just the as much as I love Boba Fett and hope that him and Fennec Shan show up in a significant way in Man of Season 3, the Bo Katan thread is still what I've is what I've been waiting for two years to <laughs> learn more about because that yeah. has been driving me it, insane. Bo Katan's one of those like one of those characters i feel like could go could go either way pretty hard either way like <laughs> we've seen her be she a could villain. end up being like the ultimate villain basically pretty easily depending on how things shake out or she could join him and <laughs> it's, I, I really don't know i don't either i even because she's like most for most of the time we've known her like in clone wars stuff she was a bad guy like yeah. she was part of clan Vizsla and all that stuff i mean death it's, watch literally yeah death, death watch. watch you know it's <laughs> <laughs> so it's like uh, it's pretty pretty easy to picture that just you know going down badly yeah and see i wouldn't i don't know i want to say i wouldn't like that because i like bo katan but i also think that because i wouldn't like that it kind of makes it a good plot point a good way to go <laughs> because because she is so she's just a wild card we don't know what direction mm. she's going to go a lot of people have come to like her because mm. you know she's in you know din's cadre of uh allies now and mm -hmm. it's like oh she was our friend and now all of a sudden i mean look at whenever din gets the dark saber like and wins mm -hmm. it off of gideon like look at her face she's livid yeah like so yeah I don't know. Like, I, I think that – I think bringing her in is really cool. But at the same time, like, I don't want to see her stripped of the Darksaber, especially by this kind of technicality. You know what I mean? Where it's just like, okay, like, she lost it to Gideon, but he can't be Mandalore. And then now Din has it. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. Din doesn't want it. <laughs> So I, it's until he loses it in a fight, he's kind of got it. He's so. got it. He's got it. And I think, but it also makes a lot of sense him being the main character for him to grow into that role. So mm. we've seen Bo-Katan be Mandalore and it didn't work out. She's, she, you know, the clans have fallen apart. I want to see her have that redemption. I want to see her bring them back together. 
but at the same time, like it's Din's show. Mm-hmm. So I, I well, you know, I don't know. Boba Fett had his own show, and look what happened to him. <laughs> so I yeah. guess maybe whose show it is doesn't really matter that much. Um, yeah, he's gonna go to Mandalore, and he's gonna like go go into the caves, the wells, whatever, get cleansed, and he's gonna find a mythosaur and like come out riding it, and then <laughs> all of Mandalore's gonna be like, he's the hero, obviously, he's the guy, obviously. <laughs> Um, he literally found this extinct creature and tamed it. And now, <laughs> and now what? So and now he's gonna fight the empire, whatever. Yeah, that and see, they're just that show. <laughs> it's almost kind of like the Fortnite of Star Wars. There are just so many things going on in it that it's a little overwhelming at times, mm-hmm. and I just don't always know what I want to be focusing on. Not that I play a lot of Fortnite, but I know that it's basically the closest thing we have to a true metaverse at this point. <laughs> so, I I don't know what is supposed to be the main story or the thing that I'm most, most interested in because we've talked about all these ways that these the story could go from Mandalorians. We haven't talked about Grogu at all. You know, like that's another mm-hmm. major plot point in this series, and I do, I will say. I don't think this is going to happen. I don't. I do think it might be kind of nice if the Grogu plot kind of takes a backseat for this season. And mm-hmm. we get to see, like, not go away completely. Like, obviously, the Empire still wants him. Like, that's mm-hmm. a, still an important thread. But if it was, if that plot thread was more the Empire scheming, never really moving on it until maybe the very end of the season. Um, yeah, yeah. And spending most of it with the Mandalorians. That's kind of, mm-hmm. I think, what I want to see the most. Yeah, I, I could almost see it being like we have the Mandalorian is like the A plot, like all the Mandalore stuff, and maybe like a B plot throughout the season with Gideon first being captured by the New Republic and, you know, being interrogated or whatever, and maybe breaking out or being broken out to, you know, become a threat again at some point. Right. Or finding out, you know, finding out who his boss was, whether that's Thrawn or whatever, you know. Like you said, that thro- I think that thread has to come back. Like, there's still relevant stuff there, but the majority of this season should be the Mandalore stuff, I probably. Didn't even, I didn't even think about that. I mean, I thought about it, obviously, but the fact that Gideon mm-hmm. is going to be, is, is... Still a factor. He is still a factor. Because it's like, it's, it's, it's Giancarlo Esposito. You're not going to write him out of the show. <laughs> you know no. what I mean? So, I... I mean, I, even so, even as of now, he's still only been in like a handful of episodes, right? Right. Yeah, he's kind of been used sparingly um so i do wonder what's going to happen with him uh because i don't think it's a particularly interesting plot point to leave him in custody forever like you said i mm-hmm. think having him break out would be um a more interesting way of handling that story oh boy i like a, oh, he's well, been in half the show at this point i guess like I said, I think Mando, despite all of my kind of my, you know, my nitpicks with some of the things the show has done, um, I still think it's a fantastic TV show. And I still am incredibly excited for season three, probably assuming Acolyte doesn't come out this year or in 2023. That's probably my my top pick for mm. um, most hype in 2023 is Mandalorian. Yeah. As far as TV shows, it's either Mandalorian or Visions for me. Visions will be good. Visions, I think, is just too up in the air. I don't know what to expect for it, mm -hmm. so I can't be as excited for it. And I know that there are going to be some that I'm like, "Eh, nah, I'm just not that interested in this one. And that's fine. Like, that's that's what's good about an anthology. Um, But I think going to different parts of the world is going to be good. It's going to be fascinating to watch no matter what oh yeah. how it turns out right and by its nature it's like you said there's gonna be probably a couple of them you're not that interested in or you know just actively dislike even maybe but there's probably gonna be a couple of them that are gonna be masterpieces <laughs> i know i mean i you think you think back to the first season and how good some of that was like mm-hmm. you know you have one tatooine rhapsody but then you have like the ninth jedi and uh um the, the i wanted to call it the princess bride what is it? Village called? Bride. Village Bride. <laughs> Princess yeah. Bride is something else. Village yeah. Bride, the duel. Yeah, just the elder. Some so many great things. Oh, the duel is I I didn't for, I forgot that what the duel was called. That one is incredible. Um they're just oh, I don't know. 
maybe I'm more excited for Vision than I know I am. You know what I mean? Mm. Just one of those like. like I was coming out of the celebration. I was like, that was one of the, that was one of the announcements I was most excited about because I was like, please give us more. Yeah. Yes, they're giving us more. Yeah. <laughs> doing something and again. I think it's good to do to do something different, kind of spotlight other other areas of the world. Um, mm -hmm. Anime is. I don't want to say anime is not niche anymore but you know it's it's pretty big <laughs> at mm -hmm. this point in time so doing some other stuff i think will be good um <laughs> sorry we both stopped to read mogo's chat message of, yeah yeah can we, we did. talk about how luke skywalker walked in on a defeated high-ranking imperial officer who had advanced dark troopers and just left him with one new republic officer without saying anything I think this was another case of John and Dave relying on the fact that Luke Skywalker was on screen and that was all anybody was going to think about. And mm -hmm. to be fair, they were right. They were right. <laughs> they were absolutely right. <laughs> but at the same time, it's uh, it's uh, one of those, uh, maybe we should. Yeah, so I think about. what we're going to have to assume is that Cara Dune took him in and got promoted and got moved to another sector <laughs> <laughs> what I, now this is not saying this is something that i want because i would still be on board for a cara dune recast to be clear mm -hmm. <laughs> what if he killed cara dune while it, what if she was trying but to take him in and she gets away yeah doesn't get captured at all he just kills her while they're escaping i think it'd mm -hmm. be a little stupid and bold-faced as to what that was trying to cover up <laughs> but um i also think that you know, Star Wars isn't known for subtlety. It's so, true. And it's Gideon true. probably needs to be and out. Did w w Don't we know that Dr. Pershing got captured too? Yeah, Dr. Is that Pershing. separate? Yeah, because he's, he's with the... Uh, That's when them. they captured the shuttle. Yes. That's right. That's right. I was trying to think, I was like, was they all captured at the same time? Because I'm pretty sure we've seen footage of him in custody. Yeah. Because I remember he's sitting with them on Slave 1 at one point. I think when they're devising right. the plan right. to get him back. Yeah, they capture the shuttle and they use that to break onto Gideon's ship. That's yeah, where we find that's out right. that Slave One has the weird, twisty. Innards. Yeah, the the gimbal that moves and stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, that's that's fascinating. I it love is it. It's very fascinating, and it just makes you wonder, like, why would they build the ship like this? This is clearly an example <laughs> of form of form before function. <laughs> um, when yep. they were when they were working on uh the concept art and the design production design for the empire strikes back. No one was ever like, Oh, we're going to see the inside of this one day. We don't have to nope, worry. No, about it, it was like, eh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, then John it don't Favre, matter. We'll figure it out. And then John Favreau was like, Hey, surprise, surprise. You have to figure out how the inside is like one. Works. How, does this, how does this thing work? <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. I mean, it makes sense. I, cause I know you can see inside the slave one in bounty hunter, but that's a pretty, minuscule you know it's like that's a playstation 2 game it's not exactly mm -hmm. the most detailed um and you can see like the cockpit a bit in attack of the clones and empire strikes back i guess yeah technically the very, but the, you get to see them like go in and like sit in the cockpit yes in attack of the clones so you, just, you get like some idea so it's like they they climb up into the cockpit and then like you know <laughs> launch themselves into the seat weirdly they do they do that and then yeah you're in uh yeah, you know, you're watching Book of Boba Fett, and it's like they sit down. I, it's just it seems very ergonomically confusing. You know, it's <laughs> like when they're facing down into the Sarlacc pit, trying to kill it, and they're like, it was know. designed by some aliens. You know, they, did, they <laughs> didn't. It's like, so, oh, this is very strange, but you know, no, it was designed by a man with a love of cats and monologuing. We know this. Mm, we on true. this podcast true. know this. Um, yeah, I don't of Kuat. Kuat of Kuat, who, not who we are talking about um, this time. We are going back to the clones, and we're going to figure out what's going on with uh, Fi. Mm. <sighs> um, I'm just not ready. I'm th it's all coming back to me, and I'm like, yeah, this, there were there were some ups at the end of uh, True Colors, but this mm -hmm. book is literally called Order 66. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I don't don't really know what to make of that since we've had this whole plot line and of them. You, you know, haven't played the Republic Commando game, correct? I've not. Do you know? Do you know anything about it, like story wise? Not, or? not a ton, really. Okay. Like I I know the levels, but it's there's some more direct tie into it in this book. Okay. 
Oh, but knows? since Maybe you I'll... since you haven't experienced all that or know know some stuff, there's uh there's some threads in there that make that tie in, and I'll I'll make sure to point out whenever we get to it. Who knows? Maybe I'll try to give it a give it a playthrough before we, because I mean I I truly don't know when we'll come back. We've probably got mm -hmm. at least two weeks before we. It'll be after the new year before we actually get in to read this book. Yeah. So good news, you've got plenty of time to read <laughs> whatever mm -hmm. these chapters are going to be. Um. But who knows? There might be probably plenty of time for me to play Republic Commando. Um, yeah, probably. So maybe I'll give it a shot if I can stop playing Armor 3 long enough. Or Republic, Republic Commando is divided into three sections. There's Geonosis, the Derelict, Acclimator, and then Kashyyyk. Yeah. And in the books, we've... In Triple Zero, we meet up with Delta Squad immediately after the second set of missions right. on the acclimator. I remember you pointed that out before. Mm -hmm. And then triple zero and true colors take place in between that set of missions and the Kashyyyk missions. We see them go to Kashyyyk in this book. Sorry. And like Delta squad is still like, you know, the secondary squad, they, they're yeah. there, but we only check in with them every now and then. So, you know, but that, that definitely plays into it in some degree. We only check in with Delta squad whenever we need to figure out how, how, uh, Sev's trauma is doing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. The extent of it. Um, Oh, speaking of the Republic commando, just remembered they announced the final member of, of Delta squad as a black series figure. I mean, we knew that was coming, right? We knew it was going to happen, but it's nice they finally announced it and we're going to have it so I can have a full squad. Have I've full got squad. Fixer back there now, so I just need Scorch, and they've announced it just like a week ago. Scorch. So it's like, okay, sweet. Finally have Scorch. Scorch is the last one because, again, we we talked about this last time we recorded. Maybe Fixer is the most, probably the, the least memorable member of the squad. Mm -hmm. Again, no shade. Just Scorch yeah. is Carthonassi and, and Scorch is probably the most like well like just because he's he's the funny guy he's the funny guy and sev is the psychopath they both mm -hmm. stand out you know and boss is your character and fixer is you know the straight man basically yeah <laughs> just the dude he's a dude he's the dude um <laughs> i uh i don't know because i do like the game it's just it's just always harder than i think it's gonna be if i'm being honest mm -hmm. the game is not easy no it, it is a pretty challenging game <laughs> It's one they, of the games, I don't know if it's got difficulty settings, but it might be one of the ones you just put on lower difficulty just to get through it easier. did not screw around. Um, did not screw around uh, with the difficulty in that game. Um, and it's it's just one of those... It's It, it, it reminds me of Karen Travis in the way that... Like, you know, as far as Clone Wars and, you know, the movies are concerned, Super Battle Droids really no different than a normal Battle Droid. They go down mm -hmm. by a Jedi just as easy. And then yeah. you run across the Super Battle Droid and Republic Commander, you're like, oh my god, here it's we go It's a freaking tank. It's just going to take forever. <laughs> it just takes... You either have to shoot it, like, three clips into it, or use a grenade, or... I mean, and it's it's one of those, like, obviously, it's not... None of it's realistic. It's all Star Wars, but, like, it's... It definitely gives them weight that they don't have uh, anywhere else. Mm. Uh, so, what chapters are we reading? Of Order 66 before yep. we reconvene so we'll be doing, in 2023. We'll just be doing the prologue through chapter three. Okay. That and that's like 70 old. pages. Okay. Pretty standard. Yeah. Um, and you said we... Yeah, it's weird. Like, as I was doing the chapter breakdown, like, toward the beginning, like, the first three readings are only covering nine chapters. And then there's 27 chapters total. <laughs> Toward the end, the chapters get way shorter. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I'm not shocked because I bet we have a lot of perspective switching there. Mm -hmm. Ooh. The last reading's like seven chapters instead. So, <laughs> even though it's the shortest reading. Uh, sorry, I'm just thinking about this book and what's probably going to happen. It's uh, it's not all fun and games. I would be it's, shocked if any of it was fun and games. Fair to say. I'd be shocked if any of it was fun and games. I think it's all going to be uh, beautifully I mean, painful. Order 66 just in and of itself is an awful thing. And seeing Karen, Karen Travis just, you know, get to cut loose basically with it. You know how bad Order 66 normally is. Think about it from, you know, her military perspective. Yeah. It's like, oh, no. Well, you just wonder because this is this is pre-chips. 
right? So mm -hmm. you don't have the... I mean, Bad Batch, there's a certain amount of drama with their chips, and, you know, uh, through Clone Wars, they're, that's... Well, it's, you it know is... that they're all, all the clones are going to attack them. Exactly. In this, it's like, a lot of them are, because that's just the way the story goes, but the ones that do, you're like, oh, no. You're, you're choosing this to some degree. On some, There's a lot of conditioning, obviously, but mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So, so, I mean, the question for me going into this book is... What do our Omegas do? Because I feel like even even the Deltas, to an extent, are starting to get disillusioned. Like, mm -hmm. we see that. They are leaning more... Oh, God. Sorry, everybody watching the stream. You hear the outro music right now. <laughs> I muted it. We're good. Um, so, I just wonder, since they are getting so... I mean, they're basically, what, just a couple steps away from just going AWOL at this point? Like, they mm -hmm. are already on their way out. Yeah, um, Omega especially is like, you know, as soon as Skirata gives the word, they'll they'll they're jump. Out. They're out. Uh, same. Delta's way. definitely not at that level, but they're also getting, you know, they have they have an idea in their head about it, like ah, this isn't necessarily as clear cut as we always assumed it was. So, Moga's asking how the clones are treated by the Jedi in the books. Uh, generally speaking, the clones are. Uh, it depends. You have people. Yeah, it, it varies a lot. It does. You have people like Etain, um, who's one of our main Jedi. You know, Jedi air quotes. Sorry for the spoiler, I guess, but you know, mm -hmm. we've read three of these books at this point. Um, she starts out, you know, kind of very unsure of herself, and then moves into like, okay, I'm sure of myself as a Jedi. I'm also sure of these clones as people. And then mm -hmm. by the end of her, you know, kind of tour of duty before she basically runs away from the front. She is, they're all people. She's feeling every loss, kind of like in a Kenobi mm -hmm. kind of way. Um, but then you have people like uh, Arlegan Zay, who, as we learn at the end of True Colors, is like, sees what's wrong. But at the same time is like, this is the way it is. This is what these clones mm -hmm. are made for. Which, if, you know, is not a like, very... He treats them with kindness and respect. Yeah. And everything. Like, he's not a jerk, but he's also, you know, very much in the system. Yep. And so... I think nearly every Jedi we see throughout the series treats the clones well. Like, none of them are, like, you know, disrespectful to him or anything. No. None of them are, you know... Um... <laughs> Pong Krell. <laughs> Pong <Krell> or anything <laughs> like that. I don't, I don't believe... So no, it's, you know, not that I've seen. Um, and that kind of makes it well. And see, I, this is, again, one of those things where, you know, people talk about how Karen Travis hates Jedi or whatever. And from what I have read, I just really haven't seen that. I think Karen Travis writes the Jedi as they were at this point in time, mm -hmm. which is very much a part of the system. Yeah. And that continues to this day when you watch, you know, Tales of the Jedi and Dooku. They're like, you know, you serve the Senate. And Dooku's like, no we serve the force. We serve the people of this mm -hmm. galaxy, but you know, the Jedi council serves the Senate. They've, mm -hmm. they've lost their way. And I, I don't know how many times I've said that in my life, but they have. And by this point, that's especially true. And you have some Jedi who see it, some Jedi who see it, uh, and choose not to walk away. Um, and then you have some Jedi who just don't and are just like, this is the way it mm -hmm. is. We're fighting to, you know, against the tyranny of the separatists, I guess. Yeah, it's like we're at war right now. You know, there, there's problems like politically with the Republic going on. And maybe once the war is finished, we can do something about that. But right now there's a war on. We're fighting you know, for the survival is what they they seem seem no. like they believe in and such. So, no, Mogo, it's funny. Mogo's asking all these questions in chat. And it's Typical like Jedi incompetence. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that is the Skyhopper's joke. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny, too, because like they're actually isn't a lot of typical there's not a you know quote typical jedi incompetence mm -hmm. the issue is i think that what i do see in what karen travis is writing is that when karen travis writes a jedi who stays she's just pointing out that the jedi who stay are complicit with the treatment of the clones that's mm -hmm. which i and that i think is where people draw the line and then you have, you know, Barton Jusik, who is basically leaving the Order to become a Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, Etain, who just is leaving the Order because yeah. of and the they're greater... They're the only Jedi, like, we have 
Jusik, Etain, and Zay are really the three Jedi that we spend significant time with throughout the series. And we see like three different, you know, viewpoints. We have Zay, who's firmly still a Jedi, but sees the problems, but doesn't see anything he can do about it. Right. And you have Etain, who's sitting on the knife's edge of like, trying to do everything she can to protect the clones and do what's right for them, but also still fighting in the war. And then Jusik, who's all but completely left the order at this point. <laughs> I mean, he, he, he does. At the yeah, end. he so does. Knows, doesn't he? Yeah, he's gone. So I, uh, it's not, we have other it's... Jedi get mentioned and like occasionally show up, but those are the only ones yeah. we get really POVs from. And that, and that's the thing I think it's just Karen Travis. When she writes a good Jedi air quotes, they're leaving the order. They're not a Jedi anymore. And I don't think mm. that is her hating Jedi. I think that is just, it's, it's an honest look at the situation. Mm. And you know? I've seen, I think it was an interview with her. I don't remember the exact quote, but you know, she like read like what the story of the clone wars and all the stuff that happened with it was. And was like, wait, so you're telling me the people that, you know, accepted a slave army and, you know, use them without question are supposed to be the good guys. Yeah. <laughs> so like, that's like, it's like, that's, you know, it's like, I can't, I can't write that without questioning it. And it's like, well, <laughs> Go for to it. me, it's really interesting to write, to read it. Cause not, nothing else at that point, especially had ever really questioned it. No. And that's, and I think that it's just, it's, uh, not to both sides of this thing, but I do think that there is... I Heroes think, on both sides. <laughs> I think there's something interesting. There is something interesting about that. Because especially, you know, you're reading, like, the Clone Wars multimedia project stuff, and it's, like, Mace Windu and Shatterpoint is, you know, as much as I love Matthew Stover and I love that book. Like, you know, he comes out of it the hero. He's gone through a bunch mm. of stuff, but he comes out of it the hero, even though he has to do bad things and is complicit with bad things on Harvard mm. Call. Um, or then, you know, you have like MedStar, which is way, not as Jedi focused, but like Barris never really, you know, that's why people are so mad about Barris in the Clone mm -hmm. Wars, because that is not the same Barris off here. Yeah. You can't convince And she has the moment of like, you know, recognizing the clones, you know, have more going on than she realized. Yeah. So other authors do touch on it. Yeah, but... And it is a kind of a plot point in Sessa's Deception. Yeah, it like, is. There's a whole like clone plot line in that that's interesting that's you know a clone realizing he's more than he thought he was yep and i just think that a lot of people it's kind of an I, and again if you have legitimate concerns i've said this countless times if you have legitimate concerns with the way that karen travis has written these characters and these books then look that's fine i don't mind mm. i just do think in a lot of cases it's kind of a knee-jerk reaction to people not uh, not thinking about the books critically and just kind of taking mm -hmm. them as they are. And it's like, oh, well, the only good Jedi are the ones that leave the Order, right, Karen? And it's like, no. But, like, you know, like, she said it. Like, there is, they accept a slave army and don't think anything about it. But it's like, so does Obi-Wan Kenobi. Are we going to say that Obi-Wan Kenobi is a bad Jedi? No. Mm -hmm. No. He does. Um, and I just think that I... Uh, it's a hard question to answer. I don't think George Lucas wanted to reckon, reckon with it too much. I think a lot of other, other authors don't want to lean too much into it either or mm -hmm. weren't given the space to. I guess I shouldn't put that on them. Yeah. Uh, whereas Karen Travis, you know, she's like, I will not write them as being the unequivocal good guys <laughs> in this situation because this is messed up. Um, mm. Yeah. It's, so many of the other books just never even focus on the clones to any degree. And yeah. It's like, you know, that's just the way the books are written. And like, they're focusing on the Jedi and, you know, whatever story they're telling. It's, ne it's never, you know, taking a microscope to it. And then well, Karen Travis comes in. It's like, no, 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 that that's what we're doing. We're putting a microscope <laughs> to the clone thing. Exactly. Like, that, that's that's what I want to write. That's the thing I find interesting about this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, look at even something like MedStar. It's like, are there main clone? I don't think there are any major clone characters in MedStar from what I remember. No, no we all, like yeah. I said, we have the one bit that we're embarrassed, you know, has a, like medical interaction with a clone and like one of his brothers got killed or is hurt or something. And yeah. he's like mourning over it. And he's like, Oh, that, it's a really great moment, but that's basically the only clone content in the book. <laughs> so well, you know, Kenobi is not a Republic bootlicker. He's just trying to be a good Jedi. Don't you put that on him. <laughs> and you do have that. characters in these Republic commando books that are verbally critical of the Jedi, like Cal Scarada and, you know, <laughs> And like, that, that I think is, you can see that as being a mouthpiece for the author. Sure. You can. A lot of people do see it that way. And it's like, you know, yeah, maybe. 
But I don't think, yeah, I don't think the way she writes Jedi is inherently bad, is what I'm saying. And maybe mm. she doesn't like the Jedi. Maybe she has said that in interviews or mm. something. I don't know. But I don't think they are written unfairly, is what I'm trying to say. Mm. I think that it's all very understandable and a very reasonable critical stance to take. But yeah, obviously, Cal Scarada is <laughs> not friendly with Jedi. No, Wayland Val is not, not friendly with anybody, and these are the Mandalorians <laughs> that we've really spent the most time with. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I forgot I have to reckon with the fact that we like Val now too. We we like Wayland Val now. Not into that because <laughs> he's actually that. like he's actually got more going on than you would have thought. He does. He's in. He's in on it. And he's got an amazing cute dog thing. I don't want to go that far. Murd is not cute. Uh, cute in the same way a lot of dogs are cute <laughs> sure <laughs> sure whatever hey Murd's awesome i know not cute though disgusting but yeah, yeah i'm just it, that's going back to what you said earlier about how we don't know which way are these guys are gonna go also the fact there is a novel called 501st imperial commando you know mm -hmm. it's like they can't all yeah we know some of them right make it of through it. and there's at least one more book that covers the aftermath of it so it's like well so we know some of them are going to have to deal with the fact that a lot of them are dead <laughs> i know so, and that's what's hard it's not will anybody die it's who's going to die who's going to die and who has to deal with it and how sad is it going to be I uh, the do, answer is very sad i do know <laughs> of what is venku is that that's darman's son right yes of those three, Darman, Etain, Venku, pick two. <laughs> one of them, one of them is not coming out alive. <laughs> and I don't think Karen Travis is going to kill the kid. So I, or if some, if they all come out alive, it's still going to hurt really bad. It's not going to be good. Um, so I don't know. There's no I'm, happy endings here. No, and I'm, I'm curious to see. I bet, I bet Ordo stays a bro. I bet we're all still cool with Ordo at the end of this. Because those Null Arcs, hardly even clones. <laughs> they are clones <laughs> in the strictest sense. They are mm -hmm. not... Are they conditioned at all? You know, Ordo will only Great do... Great question. Ordo only does what Cal says, not what anybody else says. <laughs> so Yeah, I, I would say no. <laughs> yeah. Because um, it's not really like the conditioning about the specific order. It's the conditioning just to obey to orders obey in general. Chancellor. Yeah. So... You know, <laughs> Ordo's definitely, you know, he's going to get the order and be like, you know, screw that. That's all you're right. That's already been seated. Like, I wouldn't. I, mm. Yeah, I'm pretty much banking on that, that he's like, mm. I'm not doing that. What? No. The question is, you know, will he be labeled a traitor by the other clones that he maybe is around at the time? Because, Probably. you know, <laughs> Probably because the regs are, you know, mm. the regs, they don't. Yeah. And have you read um Dark Lord? Not yet. Rise of Darth Vader? Because there's an interesting bit with Order 66 from that that's that's deals with the you know the clone you know following the orders or not. That's James Lucino, right? Toward the be yeah, yeah, it's okay. toward the beginning of that book, if I remember correctly. Because I think one of the POV characters in that book is a surviving Jedi that survives because some clones didn't act on it immediately. Which I mean. I will say, Clone Wars did a lot of good. I do think, on the whole, the chips were a bad idea. I think mm -hmm. that I liked... Because it just... it just. I feel like it just writes out a lot of interesting stories. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we, have, we, you know, learned time and time again, the clones are ride or die for the Republic. They will listen to the Chancellor. The Chancellor is their supreme leader. They will do mm -hmm. anything. That is sufficient, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Um, the chips, I don't think the drama with Wrecker and the Bad Batch and the clones in the Clone Wars, I don't think that's worth the drama that yeah. we lose. I mean, yeah, to me, the, the reason that they're there is that we have, you know, this TV show that's going for five plus seasons at that point. And it's like, oh, we like all these characters. We don't want to see them murder Jedi. There has to be a reason. We need, we need to give them something that takes it out of their control so that we don't have to be mad at them for doing it. I guess it's a And to show. me, it's like a cowardly move, it, writing wise. I don't, I, I don't want to say cowardly because it is, at the end of the day, aimed at, you know, kids. But mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with your sentiment. 
generally speaking, it is the easy way out of making it so that even though the show hasn't strayed away from like darkness in the past, I'm kind of shocked mm. that they felt the need to do something like that. Or maybe George mm. thought it was a good idea. Maybe that's all there's, it was. There's, there's really, I mean, there might be telling. There might be you know some interviews that sure. explain it. I don't know, but I've never heard anyone say specifically, you know, whose idea it was or who signed off on it or what. Yeah. At that point, I don't want to blame it all on George. I'll just yeah, I don't want to blame it on George or on Dave. You know, yeah. I'm not gonna you know, without reason, crap on him. Well, and see, that's like Mogo's bringing up is like that he thought the clones would just lose faith in the Republic uh, before the chips, you know became kind of their reason to keep faith and really like whenever you read a lot of these books about clones and you know uh things like that a lot of clones are losing faith like these republic commando books are pretty much entirely about clones losing faith in the republic and the reason they're fighting this war and you mm -hmm. know without the chips i think we're gonna learn that i think we're gonna learn that a lot of clones don't have a reason to stay um I'll be, I think, I'm going to go ahead and put some predictions in now. We'll see if they stay, oh, cool. we'll see if they stay true. Um, I'm just going to focus on Omegas and not the whole kind of family. Fi yeah. is still too, is still too deep. Well, in he's not even, he's, he's um KIA as far as the Republic's concerned. Right. So then I think in terms of. I think he is too far in recovery to be a real factor, depending on how much time passes mm -hmm. between the books. I don't think he's yeah. too much of a factor. I'm more concerned about him being a victim than right. perpetrating any <laughs> violence. Um, of course. I think... <sighs> I think Niner sticks with the Republic, the Empire. I don't think mm. he flips. He's been too... He's been he's too, too by the book. He's been too by the book. He is too uh, unreliable as far as, uh, I mean, was it True Colors? True Colors, yeah, is the one with, uh... <sighs> yeah, because it's the one where Fi gets hurt. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's that whole scene, you know, where uh, we hardly heard from Niner at all in that book. And I think, right. there's, I think there's a reason for that, because the entire book is about clones finding their way, and Niner's way is with the Republic. That's my that's my read on that. Um, a teen. Don't really know. He's the wild card. Uh, I straight up think Darman will die. I think Darman will die. Um, yeah. And that makes me very sad because Darman is, I think, the most kind of he's the most human, the most emotional of the clones, I think. Um, and I just think that he's. I think he could die trying to save Etain. He could die trying to save Venku. Like there are just there are too many vectors for him to die, for him to live. You know. Mm -hmm. Of course, I hate that you know, and Fetmatic knows. <laughs> I hate that you both know what happens. Fetmatic, of course, <laughs> just putting a thinking face emoji in the chat, which I uh, resent. But <laughs> I just think I just think that uh, that or it could be the most painful to see him break to the conditioning. It just seems like he is the one who is furthest gone. You know, I don't think the conditioning will be a factor for him. And again, Atin, I just don't know. I think it, I think the story could go forward with Atin and Niner being the remains of Omega going into the Imperial era. Um, mm -hmm. I think I would lean towards Atin going Empire rather than breaking off. But it's it's hard. It's really hard to say. Mm -hmm. Um you know, because, like, he hasn't really made up with Val. So if he wants to, uh, you know, oppose Val in some way, and that has something to do with his decision, mm -hmm. you know, Val's not going to side with the Empire, so. Right. I don't know. Those are my predictions. I truly don't know if the Jedi will actually survive or not. Um, I know Barden is not really a Jedi anymore, and I think it's possible that people who want him to survive are going to say, well, you're not a Jedi anymore. We're not going to kill you. Um, so, you know, you're exempt kind of <laughs> kind of yeah um i think etain i think she's gonna eat it too uh which is kind of which which is also something that kind of makes me think maybe darman doesn't die because etain mm -hmm. does it doesn't seem like karen to let them off that easily <laughs> or they both die <laughs> um it's like more tragic if only one of them dies yeah but also like Cal, of. Has, Cal has talked so much about you know it's like how uh, well you know Vancouver shouldn't grow up without his father 
Like, you know, it's like, am I going to tell Darman? Am I not? Um, mm. So that seems like, you know, something that Karen Travis would love to write Cal for or regretting. Um, so so I, I just, I just don't, I don't know what to think. I don't know what, what to makes think them, makes it the most dramatic and sad. Is yeah, that's kind of what I'm, you have to look at it like. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. But at the same time, there are many different routes for sadness mm -hmm. in this book so yeah it's true it's very true i don't know because because um, I, I don't really remember in the at the end of the last book you know we had cal and ordo and everything they're all making the plans you know to make their like you know their run date yeah and their run date is almost exactly like when order 66 we know happens i just i don't think we're gonna get a situation in which they all get away just right. fine because again like it's one of those things like it's, it's one of those little this dramatic ironies that for us the readers we're seeing this we're like it's like you're doing the math in your head you're like so three years after attack of the clones <laughs> is when order 66 happens ish you know yeah we don't know yeah. the exact dates but we're like we're two years out and they're saying it's like in a year we're gonna run you're looking at it, you're like that seems like a bad clock oh. <laughs> to be looking at. Yeah, you are. So, oh you're no, running a losing race at that point. Mm -hmm. So it's like you don't. They don't realize that there's a there's a really definite endpoint on the horizon, and they know. I mean, they know that everything's going to come to a head at some point, but they don't realize how much of a head and how well, definitive and see, a point it's going to be. And it's what's hard is like the the writing is kind of on the wall because we have Atin and I can't remember who he's running with at the beginning of the last book of true colors when he's on that mission and they are kind of working out the math of how many droids there are in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there can't be that many left. Right. You know what I mean? Like they cannot be cranking these out fast enough. We have defeated this many, like we've won this mm -hmm. many battles, taken these factories. So it's like the pieces are there for them to be able to put it together. It's like this war is ending sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. um, but of course they don't know that it's all, and you have, you know, the whole um, Bessany plot with, you know, finding out that Palpatine's up to something forgot with the, about, forgot the banking about and the, there's, there's all these different threads. It's like, are they going to find things out quick enough to make a difference or is it going to be just like, you know, tragic, tragically like they were, they had all the pieces, but they hadn't quite put, put them, them together, together yet. That's another, mm. that's a completely, that's a plot point I completely forgot about. Um, mm -hmm. because not that it's any less dramatic than anything else, because, you know, anyone who isn't romantically entangled with, the cl with these clones creates a very, very tempting thread to snip. <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So yeah, the more like, connections they make, the sadder it is. Cause you know, any loss anywhere affects so many people. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I was pretty sure I am thinking Ordo is going to get off scot-free more or less but and it's like, he's well, got he's got a par partner there that... he's got Bessany now so mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. that you know they're all sucked into this mandalorian found family the compound the scarada compound mm -hmm. on mandalore um yep it's just the end of that book that last book was too happy you know <laughs> there was too, there was too much hope well that that's the thing about happy endings that nothing's ever really over not anymore anyway <laughs> that's a matthew stover quote <laughs> Oh, is it? God. <laughs> of course it yeah. is. Like, That's the thing about happy endings. Nothing's ever really over. It's that like, oh, insane man. You, you, you monster. <laughs> <laughs> that insane man. Mm. And this book, you know, is all is written, you know, a few years after Revenge of the Sith came out, both the book and the movie. So it's got all the, it has all the framework laid out for it, which is nice. It can play within the framework that's established. Yeah, I'm a, uh... Oh God! See that stack I'm pointing at right there? You can see the book mm -hmm. on my. I can see the book. Yeah, it's at the bottom. That's such a pain in the ass. I've got to. I can see the spine <laughs> that <laughs> of that really oddly really bad covered, covered book. Not, <laughs> not bad. It's not actively bad. It's just why. It's, it's anachronistic to the rest of the series. It, it really is, and it stands out so hard you know even imperial being such commando a dramatic is, title and everything yeah even imperial commando goes back to looking mm -hmm. more consistent I yeah, yeah it's really... got like the concept art looking art style to it yeah i will say though we i don't know if we talked about this like i'm sure we did the essential legends collection you know hard contact is getting mm -hmm. getting a reprint now the cover is 
so good. I don't know yeah. what it is. There's something about that cover for Hard Contact, the new art. So yeah. good. Um, Getting some new artwork depictions of like, you know, the various missions they're on and stuff is going to be pretty fun. Right. As that series goes on. Agreed. Because, um, I mean, I know. But I, don't I who... kind of want, even though it's such a small part of the book, I really kind of want the cover to um, Triple Zero to be just like white with them in black armor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> From the beginning on Fest. <laughs> Oh, like I think that, that's I almost think, like too comedic, but it's pretty funny. great. I think it. I don't even think it's comedic, especially because you know it's like their armor's all black now. Like it's that's yeah. what they look like. But and Fest, I, feel I mean, like... it's literally just like the first chapter of the book. It's like irrelevant to the plot, but it's pretty great. Their armor. Is but black I can also the see them time. just you know on Coruscant looking pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I think Triple Zero is probably going to feature Coruscant as the as the main mm -hmm. title because it's literally what you know but i could just imagine you know, just a snowy landscape and then four <laughs> black armored commandos i don't know who was somebody... somebody captioned with like why did we get our armor painted <laughs> <laughs> somebody in our discord was talking about uh not or Kilora seeming more jungly more like rainforesty than they expected mm -hmm. and i I'm kind of in the same boat granted you know it's just one artist interpretation it's not necessarily mm -hmm. canonically more jungly than that but like i always thought of it as more kind of a deciduous like temperate yeah planet where it's like okay there's a forest but also it's it's farming so mm -hmm. but you know people farm yeah in rainforests <laughs> yeah it's hard you know climate, so. literally an artist being like hey we need them in like you know in a tree area okay and they kind of go jungle style it's like well kind of meant more like this but whatever whatever it's fine <laughs> It's good art. Whatever. I really like it, but yeah, yeah, I like, I like it. Looks good, and I, you know, based on the way the other series have done, they always have consistent art styles. Yeah, like you know, same artists doing them. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that series pans out visually. Me too. I especially I think True Colors could use an update. I don't hate the cover for that, but it's a little kind of meh, you know. Mm. Um, so I'd like to see something new with that. Yeah, to me, the weakest ones are Hard Contact and Order sixty six. Because Hard Contact is kind of like almost a game screenshot. It looks looking. It, yeah, yeah. And the other ones are more like concept art, which to me always looks pretty cool, even mm. if it's 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 kind of more stylized. But the Order sixty six, the one that just really stands out. Yeah. Agreed. Even though, and there's there was an original cover art that stylized I know, way better. We've, we've seen it because I've looked it up. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's I think it's just like a close up of the helmet and then the in the visor there's like a reflection of you know battle happening or something it's like oh it's, it's pretty dramatic yeah it's it's good like, then why give us this weird kind of clone wars I mean, yeah maybe that's why because it looks like the clone wars you know like mm -hmm. I, well i think there was also i think it's the same time frame they did that scoundrels and scourge all yeah, have that kind of similar, stylized yeah. and both the other ones as being standalones work pretty good like Scoundrels is a really cool stylized, like, oh, this fun, you know, heist, you know, lineup of people. And then Scourge is this, you know, slanted, it's weird. just Jedi. It's yeah. it's weird, but it's kind of cool. And I, I get what they were going for. But Order 66 being in the middle of a series is like, ah, it doesn't, it doesn't blend. <laughs> no, and it's nice, too, whenever you have, whenever across series you have consistency. Like, the High Republic books mm. all look pretty similar on the covers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's like, that's, that's. Uh, that's good. Obviously, Alphabet Squadron has some of the best Star Wars covers, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Just period. Um, the Ascendancy Trilogy, oh. Aftermath. Like, Aftermath, I'm not, like, a huge fan of the style of consistent. those, but they are consistent in, like, you know, it's like, oh, you look at that. It's like, yeah, that's a series. Yeah. Or Legacy of the Force and um, and Fate of the Jedi all have, you know, the very consistent art styles throughout, those, you know. Those Ascendancy books. Mm. Just... Some Again, of... not like my favorite art style, but they are like very striking and oh, like I, distinct. I, I think it is my favorite art style. I really am mm. a fan of kind of that like very contemporary modernist uh, constructivist. Mm. If you want to get really art history about it, it's yeah. very bold and just geometric shapes. Mm. I love it. So those are very good covers. Um, and it's funny because to, honestly, to me, those look like they could be like special edition covers or something because they're mm -hmm. so striking compared to what we normally see in a Star Wars cover, which, you know, even yeah. something like Light of the Jedi, it's like, oh, there's some Jedi, you know, like, yeah. cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not bad. Good. But, you know. The Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, my, my favorite era of covers has got to be, you know, the Drew's Trues and Art uh, era. Just, it's it's got to be the best, not but, close. you know. It's not close. <laughs> the Drew's and, Trues and What makes me sad is that the uh, the Thrawn trilogy is, like, pre that. I know. 
And the first cover I love. The other two are like, they're fine. They're just fine. But the first one is iconic. It's iconic. It's literally, I was going to say the same thing. It is literally iconic. Um, Hmm. I don't know, dude. It's one of those ones, like, I would love to see, like, give Drew Struzan each of those books. Like, even, like, base it on those original art pieces. Just do it as Drew Struzan. And just do Drew Struzan style. That'd be amazing. Like, still very much looks like that book. It's like, okay, give it a little bit more artsy flair to it. And it could be fantastic. I, uh, it's like Thrawn isn't very prominent on any of them, which is really weird. I know. What is that game? It's like I wish he was more prominent. I wish we had like a really good piece of art for Talon Card on the book on the covers, somewhere, in a no gree at some point, you know. Yeah, I know. Speaking of Drew Struzan, I know I've talked about this before. I, God, I'm gonna have to find it though. That's really annoying. Was that a slash dot link? No. I think I've uh, talked about it before. I don't like any of the depictions of the no gree really. Like, none of them fit my mental image of what I'm, you know, picturing when I read the books. Yeah. I... I don't know. It's hard. They always are just scarier than I think they are every time they mm. get depicted somewhere. And a lot of times they're bigger than I think they should be. Yeah. Because... They are, mainly because... Small. We're, they're described as being able to disguise themselves as Jawas. And I'm like... Sometimes I'm like, that thing could not look like a Jawa, no, no. matter what it did. Well, and I guess that's actually one thing that I think Rebels did well with Rook. Is yeah, that like yeah he's, at least he's, he's like pretty small. The right size. I'm still not a huge fan of the design, but it's one of the better ones, I think. Because there's one mission in um in Jedi Knight Jedi Academy where you fight Nogri. Yeah. And I'm like, these guys are not Nogri. No, they're like big and they're you know they're kind of. Yeah. Okay. This is we. I think we should wrap this up. It's getting a little yeah, late. Yeah. Yeah. But I do want to call out, I know I've talked about this before, I want to bring it up again, because it's still driving me insane, and maybe you, the listener, know something that I don't. Uh, Super Nintendo game called Phalanx. Um, You probably know it, if you know it at all, you probably know it as the shmup with a guy, an old guy playing a banjo on the cover. There is an X-Wing on the cover of that, despite this not being affiliated with star wars at all i'm trying to find a high-res image right now um the x-wing on the cover of phalanx the box art looks like a drew struzan x-wing it looks <laughs> like it is lifted from drew struzan art it's maybe not definitely but like cole I, I, do you know what i'm talking about are you looking at it no i'll, I'll look it up here in just a sec Okay, no, I can, I, oh, I can, I'll drop a link in the YouTube chat if you're going to look for it. Um, it looks very much, very much like an, like a Drew Struzan X-Wing. So, if you know anything about that, hit us up. I looked at every piece of Drew Struzan Star Wars art I could find. Uh, didn't run across Okay, anything. yeah, yeah, I see it. Yep. Huh. Didn't, didn't see it anywhere. Um, so, I, I'm fairly certain it wasn't actually lifted from something but i can't be sure mm. yeah huh i don't know what it would have come from uh since you know the you know drew struzan's art pieces are on the internet pretty much in their entirety or they're on books and they don't you know they wrap around and i looked front and back didn't see anything mm. so. yeah, it definitely looks stylized like his usually are yeah very kind huh. of painterly um yeah so huh. i'll put that out there if you know what it is, pretty sure I've talked Odd. about it before. But if you know what it is, go ahead and hit us up. Uh, mm-hmm. So for next time, whenever that might be, some, what, Wednesday? Is that when this comes out now? Yeah, some Wednesday yeah. in 2023, near near the beginning, early January 2023, um, read the prologue through Chapter 3 of mm-hmm. uh, Republic Commando Order 66 by Karen Travis. And I don't know if it's a good cliffhanger, but I hope it is. I didn't really look. <laughs> It usually is. You've got a. You've got a way. You've got a way. Uh, Cole. Until that time next year, where can people find you on the internet? I'm at Mando Wraith on all the different social medias, and I'm on Skyhoppers talking about Star Wars, which we're also going to be taking off till the, till break, the yeah. next year. But you know, yeah. coming so, back to talk about Bad Batch more than likely. Yeah, because um, that's coming out January fourth. Fourth. So. Oh, and I want to mention. I did, I mentioned on Skyhoppers yesterday, but. 
if you happen to be OSWpodcast.com <laughs> on Marvel Snap and you played a game against me, you know, uh, that was cool. And, you know, let me know. Because <laughs> that was really weird. That was very funny. Um, we did a little research on After Hours yesterday. But it may not be a fan, but if you are, let me know. I will say. OSW I freaked po- out. OSWpodcast.com. <laughs> On Second Watch is a movie podcast, it looks like. Still running. And it looks like their producer and editor is a Star Wars fan. So if that's you, say something. It's hilarious. <laughs> I would love it if it was. But, you know, anyway. So, uh, Twitter still exists. I, you know, our episodes still go out there. Cole is on there. I will say I'm not looking at the Twitter anymore, for the most part. Uh, so uh, the most reliable way to reach us, which as far as I know is the way most of you prefer to reach us anyway, is email or skywalkers at gmail.com. Uh, send all your requests, inquiries, comments over there, and we will read them on the show and, uh, usually respond to them, assuming they are worthy of a response. I don't think we've gotten an email that was not worthy of a response, but mm-hmm. Yeah, anyway, so that's that's where we're at. Twitter, still around, just it's not the most reliable way, I think, of getting a hold of us these days. Um, me, anyway. Yeah, I usually try to keep, like, I get notifications for it, so sure. I'll yeah, probably yeah. see it yeah. and I'll respond, but, you know, I don't yeah. actively go on it very often. Well, yeah, I was gonna. that's mostly what I was referring to, is, like, mm-hmm. you're the one responsible. <laughs> I don't know how often you're going to see stuff. So... I should get notifications still. Okay. It's on, like it's on my phone and logged in and stuff. Okay. So so you could yeah you could you can get a hold of us on Twitter. We'll get there. Um, I think that's everything for this podcast. I'm gonna say it is because it's ten thirty, and this podcast is truly I think one of our longest ones probably two hours and fifteen minutes. That's up there. Uh, it's up there. That is truly up there. We didn't even have a book to talk about. <laughs> no, we did. That's just that's just typical of us. It is. It is. I think we really kind of run. We ran the gamut of things that we talk about on this podcast tonight, mm. and I'm proud of us for that. So, everybody, I hope you have a. Uh, oh, hi, Torch. <laughs> Torch is showing up here at the very last second. Um, You're here for the sign off. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to say, everybody, have a happy, safe, healthy holiday and a mm. new year, and we will see you. In 2023, very beginning. Yep. I'm sure we won't wait too long because, you know, I'm going to read these two nah, chapters nah. and be like, Cole, I need to do this first right week, now. The first week or two, we'll definitely be back. <laughs> yeah, well, it won't be too you long know, of a break. So, Allowing, uh, thanks, you know, every, every everything that can happen. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody, for making 2022 <laughs> the best year for the podcast yet. Thanks for putting up with us, sticking around through all of the ups and downs, the technical difficulties, the missed weeks. We do appreciate it because we do Mm. love doing this podcast and it's nice. Absolutely. Nice that we have a little community of people who like to listen. So uh, until 2023, library patrons, please make your final selections. The library closes in 20 minutes. (laughs) The little salute there at the end. (laughs) Oh, visual sign off. Yeah, that was. That was quite the episode. I'm happy with that one. That was just, there's a lot, a lot of good stuff floating around. So we got into some weird stuff. (laughs) We really did. Very appropriate for us. Torch, you kind of missed some, just some, you'll have to listen to the episode, I guess. There was some, uh. Uh, It's appropriately interlude 23. Going into 2023. Oh, wow. That's fun. Okay. I just called it a surprise interlude. I guess I'll retitle it. So it, the VOD is correct. Um, it doesn't have a title. Um. OSW interlude number 23, not 34, 23. Um, I don't know. What should we call it? I don't know. Hmm. I normally try to keep tabs during the episode. It's really hard whenever I don't come up with something, when I don't have something. Yeah, don't have something to stick out. Mind. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to edit this later, so I'm kind of just going to pick the name now. Mm-hmm. Um. Maybe I'll just call it like 40 year old fanfic or something. That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> yeah, it is 82, 40 year old. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that, the princess tapes thing is just wild. Yeah. Uh, I so was crazy. like, I was shocked. And then, like, you know, doing research, I was like, man, this is so strange and weird and cool. You know, I love Star Wars Apocrypha. I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. That is just, that is 
the coolest thing. Um, okay. And if I ever do get to check out that shop that had more of them, I hope they still have some. <laughs> so I can just, time you get you know, out even if I don't get any of them, I'll probably dig through all of them and look. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I, you know, it's one of those things where even if you got the fluke, the one Star yeah. Wars thing, you're going to have to look through all of them to make sure. Yeah, well, they said they were on. They said there was a bunch of Star It was all Star Wars stuff, apparently. It, to me, it sounded like maybe somebody's like whole collection got donated or something. Maybe. <laughs> they, apparently, this place had a whole bunch of Star Wars stuff in general. But they, they were like looking through stuff. I was like, he's got like all the books, basically. So it's like, I know he doesn't have this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard you know, it's hard when you go to to antique malls and stuff that have like a bit like there's one booth here the antique mall here in town that has a lot of star wars uh action fleet and the star wars mm. micro machines die cast chips that i'm always going yeah. on about and i find it so hard to not walk out with an armful every time i go in there and i'm like mm-hmm. what would i do with these things like these i but it's like i I try not to lean too hard on nostalgia. You know that about me, but at the same time, it's like, these are toys I had as a kid and I don't know what's mm-hmm. happened to them all. I want to get them back. And I'm afraid that if I don't buy them, they won't be there. Yeah. Yeah. But they're also like, they're sold at a very reasonable $10. Most of them in box, you know, like they're mm-hmm. complete, but you know, you buy five of those. It's like, well, that's, that's $50. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's like a tank of gas or whatever. So it starts getting, uh, well, it's a tank of gas on a good day, I guess. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's, you start getting... gas depending on your vehicle and the time of year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is the Pontiac vibe? Is that a good, uh, that's what you drive, right? No. Yeah, it gets about yeah. 30. Okay. Yeah. Well, my, my Subaru gets right really now. It's good. like 25 to 30 miles for a full tank. Yeah, my uh, my Subaru gets good to ask mileage, but mostly because it sits in the driveway most of the time. Um, so I don't know how good the mileage it helps the most. Is. Yeah, but it just doesn't move. I'm usually you know work from home, and I usually walk or ride my bike most places. Um, anyway, Peepaw Ben needs to go to bed. Um, I would understand. love to be able understand. to read Convergence. I'd need to get in there before Allison turn the whole, turns the light off. Uh, so because it's fine if i get in there and I turn you're not gonna read order 66 tonight <laughs> oh you know i want to i'm, I'm trying that because i'm in because i i'm just gonna own up to it i'm just gonna grab the han solo adventure book off the shelf right now mm-hmm. while i'm up there so yeah. i'm leaning into reading that uh but i also feel like i need to read convergence because it's like well this is current i want to be current with the high republic also um mm-hmm. It's harder for me. You to got read a couple that. weeks of no podcasting and such, so it's yeah. got. Well, and again, because like I said, I can't, I can't find convergence for free on the internet anywhere right mm-hmm. now. So, and and it's, if it was like, <sighs> if it was like between five and ten dollars, I would just buy it. I just buy it because I don't mind supporting Lucasfilm, obviously. You know what I mean? Um, and showing you know Del Rey, showing my support that way. But at the same time, it's like it's fifteen dollars. That's not nothing to me. That's not throwaway money. So. Mm-hmm. I just have to. I just have to get in there. If I have the light on before Allison turns hers off, I don't feel too bad continuing to read. But I don't want to go in there and turn the light on after she has turned it off. So yeah, that feels bad, man. Yeah, it's not a good feeling. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks everyone for hanging out. Whoever is still in our chat, Torch Fetmanic, mm-hmm. Anthony, Anthony. It's weird, you know. I call you Mogo. I do know your name <laughs> is Anthony, but it says that right there, and it's what I read. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for hanging out. It's been real. We will see you on the other side of the new year. Have a safe and happy holiday, and we will see you all later.